Hello everybody and welcome back to another speedrun tutorial, walkthrough, whatever have you. Um, this is one I promised a really long time ago when I did uh, the Sekiro Any% Percent Shura. And uh, I don't think I ever uploaded Immortal Severance, but I, I did that speedrun, which is also under an hour. But this is every Sekiro boss, every Sekiro mini boss, yes that includes Headless, yes that includes Shichiman Warrior, all in under two hours. We're doing it. Uh, also, there are mods installed, <laughs> so I'm sure you could already, in or, I'm sure you could already tell. Um, important to note about the mods, they are only available on PC, if you're, if, if you're curious about that, but, um, they don't affect gameplay whatsoever. You're gonna notice some cosmetic mods that change the way things look, but they don't actually change hitboxes, they just change appearance. Um, I'll, po I'll point them out as we go. Anyway, if you see my other speedrun videos, then you know what I'm doing here, which I'm kick jumping. The reason you do that is it's just the fastest way to move. Um, kick jumping, you want to kick jump through that window, but I missed, so boo on me. But anywho, if you're new to this, we're I I'm going to give you walkthrough commentary. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to beat all this shit in under two hours, which this is a dense run. Let me warn you, this run is dense as hell. It's so dense. Anyway, get the, get the sword from Kuro. Uh, you want to do the dialogue and then go out the window because it's a bit faster, just do the jump there. The weird thing with Sekiro's dialogue is you actually have to have a rhythm when you press X to get it the fastest. You can't just mash, you have to mash, but you have to mash at a perfect rhythm to get it. Anyway, first mini boss here. This guy counts. The community voted. The speedrun community, this guy counts. Uh, I try to hit him twice and then wait to see what he's going to do. He only has two attacks. He either attacks with an overhead or he attacks with a side swipe. The side swipe is very fast. It comes from your right side, his left. So you got to be wary of it because, as you can see, you have no HP here. You can heal with the Gord, but I'm pretty sure he kills you in one hit regardless. So, um, <laughs> as silly as it is, that guy can be a quote unquote run killer just because if you get hit by him, you may as well reset because you lose like 45 seconds. Um, but yeah, he, he he's not too bad. It's just R1 twice, deflect, R1 twice, deflect, and he dies. Uh, just do that twice. Anywho, yeah, see, I got a nice little mod for Kuro's outfit. And the sword is what I mean. The the Buster Sword, it looks gigantic, but it is actually still just the same hitbox as Kusabi Maru, which threw me off a little bit sometimes because I would expect it to be bigger because I it looks bigger, but it's not. Um, also, Sefi Roth, yes, yes. <laughs> Look, I've played Sekiro so many times, installing mods um, gives it a little gives it a little spice, gives it a little flair, makes it nice, really enjoy it. Uh, anyway, yeah, just let, let Genichiro hit you and that's the first of many, many splits. Thankfully, we do not require uh, Genichiro to be part, like the tutorial version to be part of the all bosses because uh, he's not impossible to be without being a new game plus, but he's pretty annoying. It would be annoying to do consistently, that's for sure. Um, anyway, continuing on, just running out, we're making way for the shuriken prosthetic, and then we're gonna kill a mini boss. You can see another uh, mod I have there. It's just a glowing version of the grappling hook. I just think it goes well with the with the whole cloud aesthetic. I was feeling Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's my game of the year so far, so I was feeling it. Uh, don't fall off there. That was a mistake. Don't do that. Uh, and then we're just going to run over here, and if you didn't know you could do this, you can just run and wee jump and get a stealth blow, which is pretty nice. Uh, General Naumwari Kawarda, as always, love my pronunciation. There are many of these no-name, well, excuse me, he has a very long name, but there are ma many of these general dudes we're going to fight over the course of the run. There's not a whole lot to say about it. The one thing to note is after I did the stealth blow, you'll notice that I turned and tried to get him pinned over here. You don't want to hit him straight on because if you do, you'll kind of push him toward the cliff and you can get some really annoying things. It's nice keeping him pinned against the wall there. Um, so you get the Gord Seed, you get the Bead, which is nice, and then drop down and get the Gachi Sugar, which we'll be using a lot of those in the run, so very necessary. Jump up to the branch, and then jump over this, and then I split there um, for the general. I try to look for consistent times to split, because you're meant to be comparing your times. Uh, anyway, use the Gachi Sugar, go invisible. I also put the Gord in slot one, and I put the Idol in slot two, Gachi in three. Use the Gachi, and then we're going to hook to the left here, and pay a visit to this guy's swamp. Everybody say hi to Shrek. Uh, I'm really bad at getting the stealth blow. If you run up to him on that side and like you crouch and then stand up and angle the camera, you can get it. But I'm s 
you can do it really fast, but I'm not that consistent with it. And it's so much faster to take three seconds to line it up than it is to miss the stealth blow. Because as you can see, it takes a long time to kill the ogre. A very long time. Uh, the process of killing Shrek is generally you want to unlock hit R1, and just be ready to loop around him. Like have circle and then angle your camera so you can just keep looping around him. Ideally, you want to keep hitting and move right or left uh, hooking around him as you hit. Because the more hits you can get without him doing a move, the less time you're dodging, the more time you're saving. Anyway, I jump up there and grab a Gord Seed. This is actually a really good time since we're, uh, I got a bit of just running here because we're going to run down here and grab the Underbridge Valley Idol. To mention, I do not do optimal strats for this route. I intentionally chose not to do optimal strats because I wanted this to be a more accessible run, kind of like I did for Dark Souls 3 a long time ago, like I've done for some of my other speedruns. Uh, you can't land on that branch I missed. Uh, but I wanted it to be more accessible. It, I only actually did three completed runs before I got sub two hour. I definitely could have improved it more, but hello, toot toot. <laughs> Hi, Thomas. Um, but... Yeah, it, this is a dense run. It's pretty difficult, and I'm burnt out on these games a little bit. But uh, this this was kind of my my swan song along along with the Sekiro area ranking. I really just wanted to get it. Um, it was on my bucket list. I never liked the all beads all memories run because I want to fight all the mini bosses. So this when this category came up in the last couple of months, I was like, okay, I want to try that. Anyway, you'll notice I moved over to the left there. You need to do that. Uh, same with the sword. The hitbox for the snake is the same, so even though it looks like it's small, it's really not. You want to move over to the left right after you go past the hut, because then the snake won't be able to hit you. And then you got to be quick on grappling those two branches, otherwise the snake will hit you in the air and you'll get dunked into oblivion, which you do not want. Anyway, grapple up there, grab the gachi sugar. You can take that idol for safety if you'd like, because we're going to go straight on to Giobu after grabbing the Akko sugar. Um, sugars are going to be used very, very readily in this run. Uh, Akko, Yash, and Gachi. And since we killed the Headless, fortunately, we're going to get the Spiritfall versions that are unlimited uh, at the cost of Spirit Emblem. So that will definitely be a big help. Um, <laughs> the beginning of this run is a lot more mod heavy than the rest. I don't know why the beginning of the game has so many mods going for it. But uh, yeah, welcome to Minecraft, everybody. Gyobu, as far as the speedrun is concerned, he, I wouldn't consider him to be a very hard boss in general. I mean, you only have one healing. Here I had none. Um, and you have one revive. I wouldn't consider him to be the hardest boss. It's just, you need to be fast. It's a speedrun. And ideally, what you want to do is stick close to Gyobu, which I, you see me try to run and do it here, but I do a pretty poor job. You need to deflect him because like you saw there, if you deflect him when he's running, he'll actually stop. You really want to keep him close to you. It's fine if he attacks you when he's close to you. What you don't want is this stuff. You don't want him running all over the place. You don't want him doing this attack because it just wastes time. So as much as possible, you want to be deflecting Giobu to keep him close to you. And ideally, you want to be keeping him close to the gate because we're going to go to the gate after it's over. And it really sucks to be all the way on the other side, like over by the fog over there, and then have to run to the gate. Um, but... I did not practice this enough to really <laughs> get good at any of that. I just really scrambled here, did the best that I could, and it seemed to work relatively fine. I speed ran this enough that this was not something I never really needed to practice um, when I came back to the game, that is. the la I mean, the last time I played was I wasn't doing... Oh, shit, I didn't mention this is a glitchless run, by the way. <laughs> No glitches. No no glitches allowed in the speedrun, which that's why I'm not knocking Yobu off the map. Um, I think a lot of the skips and glitches, I don't want to say ruin Sekiro speedrunning, but I will. Uh, Air Swim is boring as shit. Like, I, it's one of those things where it's really cool tech to see once, and I respect it, but after you've seen it one time, is it really that interesting to see someone swim through the air again and again? I don't think so. I think it's kind of a novelty. And at the end of the day, speedrunning for me, take the idol after killing Gyobu, use the um, attack power upgrade, then go through the door. At the end of the day, speedrunning for me is getting a chance to play the game as fast as possible, not trying to find ways to circumvent playing the game, which I know is kind of contrary to what speedrunning is supposed to be, but whatever, man. I have my own definition and what I want out of speedrunning and I want to play the game but I want to play it fast so that's that's what glitchless does essentially obviously there's going to be some strategies involved where you do things faster but 
for me, this was really just play the game as fast as possible, um, which again, I said, this is dense, man. Look, we're already going on to bull. We're going on to bull. Kill this guy right here. Stealth blow him, knock, hit him twice, doesn't matter. Put on the Akko Sugar and we're going to use it. And if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I have a terrible fight with the bull here. You can actually annihilate the bull if you get a good set of RNG and don't screw up your deflects, which I get a good set of RNG, I believe, but I think I screw up my deflects. I did not there. That's one of the best attacks to get when he, when he bows his head down and then lets you deflect. You get like three to four hits on his head, and that is what you want to be doing. He takes way more damage to his head in terms of stagger potential, and the Akko really helps with that. As you can see, he keeps getting staggered. It really just lets you go in, but I fucked up my deflex, and then I got burnt, and then I didn't have healing still, so I was like, I just guess I need to die here. Not really ideal, but... You know, what are you going to do? It's such a shame because I'm pretty sure most of the rest of the fights I had with Bull in my nine attempts, as you can see at the top right, were, were pretty good, actually. But here, my deflects are just bad. They're really bad. But <laughs> I managed to pull it off, uh, which which I guess is, is what matters. And my times were so bad, um, having only completed... I had only completed fully one run. So, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of room to improve, as as you'll see. Anyway, we're gonna run out this door here. Now, typically, if you have good healing, you can just run to the left there um, and go to the branch, because that's where we need to go next. I did not realize the guy grabbing the door was invulnerable, so screwed that up, but fortunately, almost got killed there, but didn't, though. Uh, that way, I could grab this idol. The game actually automatically gives you this idol after you kill the bull, so usually you don't grab it, but here I grab it because I want to rest, because we're gonna have to go fight the lone warrior, the, the lone shadow warrior. Um, and I'm pretty good at fighting him, but not good enough that I'm like, yeah, sure, I can no-hit this boss with full confidence when I'm well ahead in the speedrun. I may as well just take the idol. Um, but things like that, you can see where I definitely could have improved my time in the speedrun. Uh, it also... <laughs> it also doesn't help here that I forgot. When you go across that bridge, you need to kill the enemy that is closest to you because the enemy closest to you has the key that allows you to get the spear prosthetic item. That's why I stood there for a second. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, crap. <laughs> because this was actually the first run I did after I think like maybe not playing for like three or four days. And since I hadn't run the game that much, most of this was not really muscle memory yet. Uh... Of, as you do reps of speedruns, you'll gradually just go on autopilot. The problem is I autopiloted there and didn't do it right, and then I autopiloted the skip, if you will, there. See, this is something that I wouldn't consider a glitch. This is just using the game's movement in a clever way. Um, I wouldn't consider that to be a glitch, because, yeah, it saves you time. It doesn't go the way that I guess they quote-unquote intend you to go, but... As long as I'm not, like, warping through a wall or, like, you know, get, getting out of the game's map, I don't really consider it to be a glitch. Um, I'll mention some things later that the run would normally have that I do consider to be a glitch that you'll see. But anyway, I grab the horn there and then I grab the uh, coin purse. I get that coin purse as an extra coin purse because it'll let me buy extra spirit emblems in case I die later in the run. Because we're going to need a lot of spirit emblems. Anyway. Drop down, hit this lone shadow, you can get a stealth blow there. I did not know that for like three playthroughs. Um, pretty nice, because I used to suck real bad at fighting this guy, and I'm, I'm still not the best at it. Uh, especially because I like to have Makiri to Makiri his foot when he does that big like foot attack, which is right now. Um, the thing you gotta be careful for is camera, 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 camera. If he does the foot thing, you can easily dodge out of the way, so just keep that in mind. You can dodge out of the way. This attack, you can deflect the foot. Whenever he jumps, he's always going to follow up with the sweep, so you can actually hit him during the sweep to knock him out of it. And generally, other than that, it's just, I usually, like, hit twice and then deflect the sword. Um, because this run is so dense, it's going to be so hard to talk about everything that I do, because... Uh, Oh, man, there's 48 splits, like, seriously. And, oh, man, I almost ran into the Sheechman. Whoops. Uh, but get the bulging, b -b -b bulging coin purse. Gonna need that. And then here, I believe we have four prayer beads, so go ahead and enhance the physical attributes. Want to get nice and healthy. Um, we're gonna get seven necklaces, actually, over the course of this run. Because, uh, I mean, we kill all the mini-bosses, so we're gonna get tons of prayer beads anyway. We're just not getting the ones you pick up on the ground. Which, that's what I didn't really like about the All Beads Memories run, is I didn't really care for grabbing 
uh, I don't know. I, I guess there, there's definitely value to it, of course. It's just you skip fighting the mini bosses. Like, you even buy prayer beads at the end of the run, um, which just seems kind of lame. Like, the mini bosses you skip aren't the most compelling mini bosses in the world. A lot of the mini bosses in this game aren't that, but still, I don't know. I just wanted to kill all the mini bosses, man. Anyway, you run through the Shichimi Warriors Arena, you grapple up, you come through here, you grab Byako, and then we're gonna grab the elevator here. Um, letting these guys see where you are doesn't matter. We're not doing any strats to go here to the elevator and quit out, because I believe this category doesn't allow quitting out to save time. However, this category also doesn't allow being cloud with a giant ass buster sword, so, you know, it is what it is. I won't be submitting this to the leaderboard, I, I don't care, uh, I just wanted to do this for fun. And it was, it was fun, but also a little frustrating, this, this is a hard run, it is, it is, because there's, there's just so much shit, there's so much you can screw up on, but, fortunately we're still in like the easy part of the run, like there, there's not really much to screw up on here, and if you do, we're still so early that it's easy enough to reset. I actually, when I get to the top here, uh, <laughs> completely failed to grab, but, I grab this extra gachi sugar. The reason I do that is because later in the run we're going to use a lot of these. And if you fail any of the strats, it's nice to have the backup. Um, so yeah, got 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 the backup sugar there. Very nice. Grab this Akko and then we're going to go up to here and grab the other Akko right here at the top. And then we're going to grab another Gourd Seed, which is the last gourd seed we're gonna grab I think this is the third one because we got the one from the general we got the one after ogre and then we get this one this is something that I would have eliminated over time if I wanted a better run I'm pretty sure the runners for all beads all memories and the people who ran this category to a competitive level they don't even grab gourd seeds and they don't even equip their gourd they just use it out of their inventory if they need to which you grab the other gachi there it, it, it kind of makes sense because again the strats for this run are so specific that once you get a good time, there's not even really a point in healing. You're either doing it right or you're resetting, which to me, that's the point where speedrunning gets to be not fun. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be resetting, you know, a hundred times just to improve my time by 30 seconds. There's definitely a viewer market, if you will, for that. There's definitely a uh, logic behind doing that. It's just not fun for me, so I don't want to do it. Anyway, after you get the Shigendo Idol, we're going to go to Ashna Castle Outskirts, I believe this is what it's called. I didn't look. Um, you can do this little movement glitch, which I don't even think I did the full, like, you can really, like, kick back far and grab, but it saves, like, three or four seconds. So, yeah, it's a speed run. Let's do it. Yeah, you want to sell the two coin purses we got to this guy and then buy the firecrackers, uh, the everybody's favorite prosthetic item in the game. They will be very much of use. And then we're gonna go talk to, what is his name, Tengu, I think? Like, it's Ishin, but I'm pretty sure he's his name says he's Tengu. Um, I was doing a really bad job at the, the dialogue thing I mentioned in this run. It, it really is a rhythm. Like, think about mashing X as fast as you possibly can. It's like doing that, but at maybe 80% speed and making sure you're spacing out hitting the X button at the same time. Describing it probably makes it sound confusing, but Hopefully I'm making sense. Anyway, when you talk to Ishin there, you want to make sure you get both lines of dialogue, go through the full line of dialogue with him, and then talk one more time, uh, go through the full line of dialogue. It's only like two or three lines, and then you want to idle to the temple. Um, just ask the first thing to the sculptor here, quit out of his dialogue, get the text, go through that full line of dialogue, then go again, and we'll get the three prosthetics in. I don't know why this works, but if you do the two lines of dialogue with Tengu there, what you're supposed to do is go kill some rats nearby, which are those, like, straw hat midgets. You, uh, you don't need to do it. He'll just show up later after you defeat Kenichiro, which, uh, hi, Aerith, by the way. <laughs> we got the trifecta. Very nice. Unfortunately, we won't be doing Shura because it just adds, like, an unnecessary 30 minutes to the end of the run, so you won't get to see any fight against her, but... We'll get to see her a little bit more later. Talking to her here is completely optional. It's If you have the Gourd Seeds, you talk to her. I recommend it because this is a difficult run. You're going to want it for things later in the run for sure. Um, here you want to acquire Makiri Counter. You should have enough experience for it. And then spend all the rest of your sand on Spirit Emblems, which um, now, now we have plenty, so we don't even need to worry about it. And then we're going to go to Ashna Castle, and we're going to defeat Ganeshiro. 
Now, for defeating Genichiro, this is actually the first significant change that I make in my run, I would say, uh, in terms of strategy. The you probably have seen it. I've, I feel, I know I did it in Immortal Severance. Maybe I did it in the second speedrun video I did for Sekiro. But there's a AI glitch essentially where you use the map. The doors that open to the rest of the area, like the arena that Kanichiro's in, you can actually trap him in that doorway and just deplete all his vitality. Look up the world record speedrun for any Sekiro category that is up to date and you'll see what I'm talking about. I don't do that. I want to fight Kanichiro, so I'm going to do it. Um, this is something, again, that I wouldn't really consider to be a glitch as much. You're definitely not intended to get up here without fighting the mini boss, the little Ashna Elite guy. But all you're doing here is running against the wall, using your momentum to carry you. I don't consider that to be that much of a glitch, so I do it. Before we go up to him, we're going to use an Akko Sugar just to speed this up a little bit because we are just really going to do the fight as normal. Like there's there's no special technique here or anything like that. It's just me fighting him. Um, sprint up, always do the R1 because it'll stop him from shooting the bow. And then again, it's just using my skills, <laughs> which uh, skills, apparently no brains. I forgot to put on firecrackers. It's actually really nice whenever he does that one, two, and then goes into the really long attack. It's good to use firecrackers to stun him out of that because it's a very, very long attack. And at this level of posture, it's very difficult to deflect everything because if you miss one, then you get caught in the loop and he kills you. So it's better to just use firecrackers, get him out of it. You'll see here, he does it, firecracker, then hit. Very nice. Otherwise, I don't know that there's really super specific tips I can give for Genichiro. I can mention that he only does Makiri on the unblockable in the first half, and he will do both sweeps and Makiri in the second half for unblockables. He do, it's always after this, the jumping, sla like jumping slam and then either the sweep or Makiri. Um, he generally does the sweep in phase two, but he will mix in a Makiri every now and again, so you just got to be... You gotta be aware he's got that in his toolkit. This is easily the most annoying thing of the first phase of his fight when he backsteps like that and shoots four arrows. You gotta be really careful and ready for it. But once you fuck in Ichiro enough, he's very much the litmus test to getting used to deflecting in this game. Once you're good at deflecting, defeating Genichiro is pretty easy. Um, then we're gonna use Akko Sugar. We don't get any uh, half-naked Genichiro because of the mod, but we are... Just doing phase two. This is a very weird phase two. You use the Akko. You actually have enough time to use an Akko there before you um, get the Makiri. And then usually he does lightning here, but I'm pretty sure in this fight he not once uses lightning, which I was like, bro, that gives me like half of your posture bar with the Akko if you just use lightning. I guess I whiff with the Makiri there, but... If you've played this game to any length, I feel like you know how to fight this phase of Genichiro, mainly because this is the exact same fight you do before Ishii and the Sword Saint. And if you've played this game, you've likely fought Genichiro Way of the Tome Way before Sword, before Sword Saint quite a lot, so I probably don't need to give too much advice as far as he's fought. Um, I guess the only thing to note is that he can do the Makiri, he can do the Sweep, and he can do... Um, the stab, or actually, I think it's like a slash, but it's not an unblockable. You actually have to deflect it. And then after that, he'll do a thrust that you can Makiri. Sorry, I know I always call thrusts uh, Makiris, but... Anywho, after you defeat him, go down. We're going to talk to Kuro. I got confused about whether I need to talk to Kuro or rest first. Just talk to Kuro. Um, I believe you talk to him. You have to choose the second option. Yeah, to obey the Iron Code or whatever it is lore plot yes uh then talk to him one more time i'm pretty sure after you talk to him again you're gonna go talk to the um incense and then do we go talk to him again yeah you talk to him again fuck his candle and then after you talk to him here he's gonna move so this is a good time this is why we don't rest earlier you go over here you upgrade your attack power while he moves because you can't talk to him until he stops moving so this is just a nice little way to bridge the time gap. Talk to him one more time, and then he'll let you leave out of the window. And go talk to Ishin, which will give us the information we need to go into the rest of the run. This part of the run, other than doing like Lone Shadow, was very easy for me to pick up because I've done all this stuff before in my other speedruns, and this is just kind of like playing the game as normal anyway. Um, but it's going to start getting a little bit more... 
intense soon. Um, I, I guess we do have monkeys and Roberto coming up, but anyway, talk to Ishin, take the sake, go through and fully exhaust both dialogue options, and then after that, you can press start to get out. Um, I, I actually talked to him again here because I think I was afraid I didn't go through the sentence fully, so I wanted to make sure I did it right. Then you want to idle to last rested because um, we're going to go back to Kuro's room and grab the gun fort key before we leave. While we teleport, I'm going to take a quick sip of water. I realize I've already been talking for quite a while, and man, I really I really just go ham <laughs> in these speedrun commentaries. So... I'm going to grab the Gunfort key. Be careful you don't talk to Karo here. Um, grab Gunfort key, and then we are going to go to Shigendo in the Senpu Temple. And from there, we're going to go fight Armored Warrior, which <laughs> is not that hard of a fight. And it's, I, it's, I would say it's my favorite mini boss in the game. Um, I don't think I ever did mini boss quality. I don't think I would, because I honestly think most of the mini bosses in this game are not the best they're not the worst either they're just okay they're not that compelling to talk about and i really hate how many repeats there are it's a very underrated annoyance of sekiro in my mind but you want to make sure you have on the firecrackers here we're going to use akko and then we're going to go up firecracker and then you should be able to stun after five r1s unfortunately he gave me the one attack that stops you from doing that that's his uh that's his how do i say fastest attack the one where he like shoves the sword forward um but whatever it works well enough just again this is kind of fighting armored warrior like as far as glitchless goes there's there's ways to sneak in extra hits in between the things he does things like that but really it's just give him the business and then kick him off this damn bridge and carry on with your carry on with your speed run Armor Warrior is great. It's such a it's such a unique fight. Like that, as far as mini bosses go, I I like it when they do something really unique and special like that. Where um, you get this guy who's like, "You will not defeat me with conventional means. I am the Dark Souls boy. I <laughs> my poise is the best, and his poise works against him. You kick him off, and uh, goodbye. Anyway, go ahead and rest at that idol because we're gonna need it very uh, far later in the run. And then now we're just running to monkeys. Monkeys have had very many different iterations over the course of Sekiro speedrunning. If you've seen the glitched speedruns, then you don't even fight Armored Warrior. You just fall through the floor, which I'm pretty sure I have that featured on my channel with the speedruns. Um, which is always really cool. That It's very cool tech, and I like, how, I like how you're able to do it. But it's nice just going and doing the monkeys normally, which... I think the monkeys, as far as doing them normally, so to speak, has been optimized to a T at this point. <laughs> Uh, you'll see when I go in here, I'll explain how you do it. It's it's very fast, very optimal. Um, it it kind of sucks because I can't imagine ever playing this game casually and not killing the monkeys this way because it's just so convenient. Um, I, but I like this fight. I actually think this fight's underrated. I, I feel like people just hate puzzle fights in these games. They're like, I want combat. I want hard. Re anyway, run back in R1 to get the... Um, the white monkey, the red monkey, you just run up here, stealth blow, then you're gonna jump down, grapple, don't grapple that, grapple that, love Sekiro's grappling, firecracker right away, stealth blow him, and that's three monkeys dead in like 15 seconds, it's it's crazy. Then grapple to the branch here, jump diagonally this way, you'll be able to grab this, and then tilt your camera to grab up here, and then you just wanna swerve around the back, and whoop, whoop, stealth blow, or death blow, whatever that was, and they're dead, that's it. <laughs> You used to do, like, I think you used to just jump up and chase the monkey down, and then you had to, like, R1 him as he landed or something like that to make sure the purple monkey didn't get away, but I guess going back around there happened at some point, and I'm a fan. I'm a fan. It's cons it's consistent. I did it my first try, and I never messed it up, so it, it it's a very easy strategy. So even if you don't want a speed run, you can take that and use it in any Sekiro playthrough you do where you don't feel like playing the monkeys. That's how you don't play the monkeys, or... Minimize it as much as possible. Now, we just got the true hero of the speedrun, which is Mortal Draw. If you, I guess I should tell you what I'm doing here. Enhance attack power. You want to acquire skills here. You need to get Whirlwind Slash. You get the Midair Deflection. You get the two abilities, Shinobi's Karma and Mind, and Midair Combat Arts. You get those for more um, spirit emblems. Then we're going to travel to abandon. Uh, Abandoned Dungeon, Bottomless Hole. Oh. 
Mortal Blade on current patch is stupid. It does so much damage. You never used it in the other speedruns because you ran on an older patch because the older patch had things that were more beneficial, particularly one being Ishii and the Sword Saint later got patched so you couldn't loop his AI to keep him in phase one through his second phase so you never had to deal with the spear until the lightning portion. Well, you used to use Ichimanji or Ichi Ichimangi or whatever it's called. I think it's Ichimanji. Uh, anyway. You're about to see the power of Moral Draw. It's really good, and we use it a ton in this run. Uh, grabbing the idol there is for safety. You drop down the bottomless hole. You run around here. You kill this guy because he'll see you otherwise. And then we're just going to jump here, hit these two trees, pause for a second there. Otherwise, you grab to the tree to the left, and then you just want to get on top of the monk's head. I'm going to be very patient here. You can kind of run up behind him and have it work, but I'm going to be patient. I equip Blood Smoke and Mortal Draw. We're going to Stealth Blow him. And then you're about to see jump, use Mortal Blade twice, R1, R1, deflect, firecracker, jump, do it again, and then deflect, hit, he's dead. It is so good, dude. It is so, it's so good. It does so much damage. The weird thing, maybe someone in the comments will know this. I didn't get deep enough into speedrunning this to really know why. I The jump Mortal Blade does more damage. I believe the reason it does more damage is because you're more likely to catch your enemy's vitality instead of them blocking and getting their posture, which is what you want. But I'm not 100% on that. What I am 100% on is that you should jump because it does more damage. So I, I just followed. I, I was just decided to be a follower in this case. Everybody said jump, I jump. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> grab the idol and then jump down here. You'll be able to grab the two trees and go past the... Uh, I'm not making the joke. No. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then run around to here, get the Yash Sugar, uh, and now we are going to run to the Corrupted Monk. Now, Corrupted Monk is another one where in the glitchless speedrun, the leaderboards, they allow you to do the AI glitch. It's not an AI glitch. It's a stealth glitch. To me, it's a glitch. <laughs> you, uh, maybe I should worry about the hardest boss. Don't at me first. Run up here. This is another thing I would not consider to be a glitch. This branch is in the game. You can jump on top of it. That's just being clever, in my opinion. Debate, if you will, if that's a glitch or not. Miss Noble, legit, just jump Mortal Blade. I missed because <laughs> I'm bad at doing it, uh, even after running a couple times. You can actually hold L1 while you jump and be fine and then just hit R1, but for me, I just butterfinger it all the time. I don't think I need to give you advice for that boss. If I do, maybe you should consider practicing a bit more before you take up speedrunning. Anyway, get the Yash Sugar, jump down. You'll If you jump at this angle at the last minute, you'll be able to grab the branch there. If you don't grab the branch, you'll fall and take damage uh, and then go back to the top. So just make sure you're mashing that L2 button just like you want to mash that like button. Do I ever say that? I, th I ask people to like my videos sometimes. It's nice. I make these videos for entertainment purposes, so when people like them, it makes me happy. <laughs> anyway, jump up here and uh, I don't know why we never did that in speedruns before, but grapple up there past the bellboy and yeah, the, grab this idol and then we're going to go on to Monk. Uh, so Monk, there is a, I'm going to call it a glitch, I'm going to call it what it is. You run on the outer exterior, like to the left of the map, you get to where the Monk is, like you're kind of parallel to where the monk spawns, you run behind it, you use firecrackers, ash, and snap seeds to make it move backward, and then you're able to jump off a pole and do a stealth blow to instantly kill it. To me, that is a glitch, so I don't do it. I jump in the water here, I grapple up, jump down, we're gonna grab the divine confetti down here, it's like four divine confetti, which is super nice for this point in the run. Five, actually, grab that, then go back up here and get the prayer bead. So we're gonna do the old classic. The old classic. You might ask me, why is it better to waste a bunch of resources and still get the same result? It's because while this may not take the most insane amount of skill ever, skill ever it takes resources, it takes planning, and a tiny bit of I I practice. <laughs> There's a little bit of timing involved. Anyway, use Divine Confetti, use Yash, make sure you have Snap Seeds equipped. Go up, run R1 three times, snap, 2R1s, snap, 2R1s, snap, then 1R1, delay, and deflect. 
Then after this, it's just throwing a firecracker, hitting R2, or sorry, R, R1 two times, firecracker, R1 two times, firecracker until dead. It's just enough damage to get the monk's vitality completely to zero. Um, yeah, you say, say what you will, but this isn't a glitch. Some people might call this cheese. To me, I don't even really understand that. Like, yes, it does circumvent the boss being able to do anything, but it takes planning to do. Most people I would assume would not figure this out in their first playthrough, so I don't really see much of the issue. Um, you can actually see right here, if you look at the Divine Confetti, you see how it's not extending to the end of the Buster Sword? That shows you the hitbox. It's still the same thing. It's still Kusabi Maru. Um, they don't change it for the sword because it, it, it literally is just a texture on top of Kusabi Mara. That's all. That's all it is. Anyway, go ahead and uh, grab the idol. That way we can warp back to it after killing the monk and grab the red blob. I can't remember what that thing was. Grab the red blob. Then we're going to use our attack power. Get that up. Then um, you get skills here. What do we get? We get Run and Slide, we get Suppress Presence, we get Shinobi Eyes, and we get Vault Over, which we'll need later in the run for... I think, I'm pretty sure we only use that for one thing in the entire run, but we, we need it, so, so get it. And now, we are warping back to Kuro's room. We're going to do some mini-bosses here, which... <sighs> If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I get screwed up. This this Ashna Elite, man. This Ashna Elite boy. Run in, jump, swing that mortal blade, and just look at that damage. Oh boy. And then you know what you do there? You deflect. You deflect. When you see the flash, you deflect. If you don't deflect, if you're late like I was, then you get this guy like doing little... I don't even know what he was doing there. He's like jumping forward. He's, he's making you scared because that's his boss's design. It's literally... Try to try to trick you into when he's gonna attack, and if you let him attack, then he screws you up. You gotta deflect the man. If you deflect him, it does like half of his posture bar. That's all this boss is, just deflect and you'll win. Um, but I did a very poor job of doing it there. So really all you're supposed to do there is mortal jump mortal blade, deflect. And that's one bar. Jump mortal blade, deflect again. Got him. Now here, I'm gonna get a little frustrated because you wanna use Yako Sugar, and you wanna go to the right, you can actually stealth blow that guy this way. It's that's why I call it the Omega Stealth Blow because it's pretty cool. But sometimes if you if you go too far to the left, you'll end up getting the enemy instead. So I try to do the strategy here, which is run around the corner. That get, this gets him away from the gunman. You do a jump mortal blade against the wall. You firecracker do another one. The thing you got to be careful is you can see the guy up there, that little asshole. He likes to throw his whatever they are at you, and it just made it a disaster. This is where. It can get a little bit scary because you don't have multiple sugars to just keep using on these bosses. It's a finite resource, and this is what I mean when I say when you have a good time, death won't be, it, it wouldn't be allowed. Like, it, you would just lose your run. Fortunately, my time wasn't good enough that I needed to worry about that. So we're going to do it again. This time, I'm going to make sure to line up and go a little bit further over. And as you, you can see there, you can go pretty far right and you still get onto him. So that, that's good to know for future reference. Anyway, go around the corner, jump, mortal blade against the wall. The reason you do that is just it seems to more consistently get his vitality, which is what we want. Uh, then get shot by two people and then get sweeped by that guy. <laughs> Lovely. Come over here, heal to try and recover. Now, if you get the if you get the two mortal blades and firecracker when you have Akko, it kills him. Like, so you don't need to worry about any of this. And this was my problem is I didn't know this guy's move set. I didn't. Uh, oh my god! It just started storming out of my apartment like crazy. Oh my god! That scared me. Thought the apocalypse was upon us. Well, the apocalypse is behind. It, it is upon us because we've lost this guy twice. I don't know his move set at all. These generals, if I'm not mistaken, they have slightly different move sets. Like they're similar, but they have slightly different things. I did not realize that guy had a two, like a double attack into. Uh, it was either a sweep or a thrust. The 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 rain scared me. Anyway, <laughs> get this guy. Gonna do it again. <laughs> the map loading in there. That's nice. And then uh, again, Mortal Blade. I tried to do it against the wall there, but I locked on, so I unlocked and did it again. See, I kind of jumped behind him there to make sure I'm getting behind. He deflected, leap. It's not that hard. You just 
<laughs> don't get hit by them, don't get shot, and just get a little deflect and it's fine. But like I said, if you get the... If you do the strategy as I just did, and you get both the Mortal Blades, Firecracker, Mortal Blade, he dies. So you don't even need to worry about that. The only thing I, I will note is jump down there to use the idol for me. That guy on the roof kept throwing crap at me when I tried to idle out, and the animation's so long that you needed to be down there. So, obviously that was slow. Not ideal, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> it goes to show you, again, if I had, uh, if I had ran this game for longer, uh, I, I could have gotten a better time. I could have gotten quite a bit of a better time, but I am very burnt out on these games. I think people underestimate how tiresome it can be to talk about um, the same games and play the same games all the time. Fortunately on Twitch, I play these games very rarely now. I don't really play Sekiro, Dark Souls, things like that much. Um, and I have an awesome community on Twitch that doesn't want to see me play these games very much because it's boring. <laughs> it's boring playing the same shit all the time. I got a little bit of flack for like making the Sekiro area ranking, but the reason I did that and this is because this both of those things were on my like I want to do that bucket list. They were really the last two FromSoft type videos I wanted to make before Demon Souls remake and Elden Ring, which I'm sure I'll make videos for. But uh yeah, and, and Ghost of Tsushima had me excited for Samurai World. I'm actually recording this as I've now beaten Ghost of Tsushima. I'm very excited to talk about that game. I have a lot of thoughts and feelings. Um, I'll be making a video essay of sorts, if you will, for it, because no, no boss ranking. <laughs> anyway, I want to get. I, I'm enjoying getting more creative with my content. The video essays are just free form content, whatever. They don't have to be video essays. It's just free form videos that I make on content I like. It's fun. Anyway. The only reason I've been talking through this is it's pretty straightforward. Follow the path I do. I grab the idol there because I'm a weenie. But use the gachi sugar on the branch because there actually is a way to get a stealth blow here, but I'm not very good at it. When you come up here, you want to like immediately go over here and sneak. I didn't sneak fast enough. If you do that, you'll actually lose the attention of snake eyes and then you can um, get a stealth blow. But I didn't do it there because I'm bad at it. I think I've only gotten it like once. Um, so just fighting normally, but I got... <sighs> I honestly choked, I'm pretty sure here, and e even if I don't die, like, I choked in terms of, I'm playing very passive and scared against Snake Eyes because I really was sure that I could get shot by the guys, like, over where Snake Eyes is, so I didn't want to fight Snake Eyes here because I'm like, no, 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 like, I don't want to get hit by the gunman, so I fought really scared. I think I do right here. I move back. Yeah, like I move back here because I'm like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I'm playing very scared and I lose a lot of the posture there, which made me get tilted and be like, fuck, 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 fuck. Um, so, yeah. Deflect the grab. I, I didn't really get a chance to feature that before. I feel like a lot of people don't know still that you can deflect that grab because I know I didn't for the longest time. It's really nice to be able to deflect. The timing's just very specific. It's very delayed as you'll see here. I think I win? I don't know, I don't remember. Oh, nope. <laughs> Which is why I grabbed the idol. Which is why I grabbed the idol. This has been a very rough couple of splits. Like, the Ashina lead I didn't die to, but he really... He, he basically did everything but kill me. Then I died twice to Omega, Omega Stealth Blow, and then I died to the base cannon. Because I love the gun fort, dude. I love the gun fort. I love the gun for it. I hate this area. This is the only area I like other than Fountainhead and Sempu I really felt strongly about in the area ranking where I was just like, I hate this area, dude. This area is terrible. Who thought it was a good idea to add a bunch of ranged gunmen in a game where you don't have any ranged attacks? Like, I know you have good maneuverability, but ugh. Anyway, I try to just do the same firecracker thing there, but I have two two health bars to get through this time, so it's I have to dole it out a little bit separately because if you weren't aware, Mortal Draw takes away from your Spirit Emblems. You can do like a baby version of Mortal Draw without Spirit Emblems, but it doesn't do very much damage, so I don't really bother. I just went back to what I know, which is I'm pretty good at just deflecting and fighting this boss, so I just went back to that. Um, anywho, base cannon nerfed. The fact that, as you see my time here, I'm about to split as I fall. Stick to the left here and you won't get shot. Like, hug the left. Um, as I grab this branch, I'm gonna split. I barely lost any time. Like, that's ins- <laughs> And, uh, in a nutshell, here why I love the gun fort. Best area, love this place. 
What could I have done to stop that? That's my thing. Like, what could I have done? I, I actually don't think there's anything I could have done. And then to add insult to injury, I get sent back to uh, the sculptor for Dragon Rot, which would inevitably happen if I kept dying anyway. But still, this, this was just a rough patch of the run. I forgot how rough this part of the run was. This is pretty, pretty tough, man. Pretty tough. But, uh... Anyway, we're going to move on and go through the rest of the gun for it. This is, did I just see Thomas flash for a second there? I could have sworn I did uh, for like a frame. Anyway, again, this is why I took the idol. When, when you have times like this, there's no reason not to grab idols and things like that. Like, obviously, when you have a really good time, you won't do that stuff. Because, again, if you die, your run's over. Um, but here, totally fine to do. So, same deal here. Stick to the left, hug it, and then I don't really... <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, maybe Se uh, Sekiro grappling at its finest, there I'm trying to grapple to the right side because you get shot there less, but it's just, Sekiro's grappling is extremely based and sometimes it just goes where it wants, like there, I'm obviously trying to grab that one that I just passed, like the, the farther, or the closer end of the branch, I just grab the further one when I jump. Very inconsistent. In a normal playthrough, really not that much of an issue. It, it is sometimes, but most of the time it's really not a problem, but, uh... In a speedrun, it could be very frustrating because you're trying to be precise and sometimes it feels like it's just completely random. Anyway, jump in and try to use Mortal Blade. I don't really know if that's the right thing to do. Maybe you're supposed to Firecracker first because it's it doesn't stagger, which is weird. You would think that Mortal Draw would be enough to stagger, but it, it's not. So if I'm not mistaken, this fight is pretty sloppy as well. You got to be really careful because right there you can see he... You can't firecracker right away because the boss, after being death blowed, is invulnerable for a little bit. But it almost immediately goes into doing these attacks. So there I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I need to just deflect, deflect, deflect. And then I panicked when it did the sweep. So I ended up hitting it and barely, barely lived, fortunately. So it's. D I swear I just saw Thomas go flying again there. Good lord. So make sure you jump from where I did there, like make sure you go to the lower level and jump because if you don't then you'll actually like uh, get hurt when you fall into the water from there. I don't know why being that much lower makes a difference, but it does. Uh, try not to get hit by the fish there, but not, not really anything you can do about it. Grab the sugar, grab the purse here in the middle, then cut to the right over here and go through the brush and you should be able to get a Yash sugar. Um, just want to make sure we get all those items and now we're going on to Guardian Ape, which... I would say Guardian Ape is probably the hardest thing so far in the speedrun. Guardian Ape is a boss a lot of people struggle with and I can totally understand why. Guardian Ape's first phase in particular is very, very annoying. I'm going to show you a foolproof method to make that first phase not annoying at all. Um, like I, It's 100% consistent. There is a faster strategy that is not as consistent, but I choose not to do it because the strategy is consistent and it is incredible. I love it. Uh, but make sure you grab the aqua down there. I actually don't grab the purifying agent here, which you need to grab that. Grab that to the left right there because you need it for one of the Shichiman warriors later. I forgot to grab it. I, again, just bad muscle memory. Um, I'm going to take the idol here both just for checkpoint purposes and to rest and make sure I have my resurrection because this is still difficult. And I also like to get the next prayer necklace here. Just a little bit of extra stuff, which is nice. Um... And yeah, make sure you equip the Yash Sugar over the Snap Seeds. We're not going to be using any more of those over the course of the run. We're going to jump down into like to the right of that tree over here, use the Yash Sugar. Then we're going to run up. We're going to throw a Firecracker. Then we're going to delay for a second. Firecracker, delay, jump, Mortal Blade. As you see, this is going to knock the monkey down. R1, R1. Wait until he's fully up. Then R1 five times, wait for him to fall for a second, two R1s. Do not three R1 or he'll fall back. Wait until he's fully up and then it stuns him again. You can do this loop infinitely once he's stunned. It's just five R1s, he cocks back a little bit, hit two R1s. If you hit three R1s there, then he will like do that thing where he flies backward and then comes do the lunge and grab. So if you just do five, wait for the fall, two hits, then wait for him to fully get up. Like you have a moment because he doesn't move right away. And you only need to hit him once with R1 to stun him again. So it's very, very consistent. Very, very nice. 
So use another Yash Sugar as soon as he grabs the head, then R1 two to three times and then just use the Mortal Draw. That'll knock him out of being able to um, do the Scream. And then here, this fight is very much, <laughs> I did a really bad job there. This is totally on me. Um, you, Whenever you get that attack, you want to go behind him and then get in front of him because the goal here is deflect him twice and he'll go into one of two attacks. Either that one where he slams the ground, which I prefer the other one. The other one is he'll do a really long wind up and then like a slam. If you use deflect on either of those, it'll knock him to the ground and then you can use the spear and actually pull the centipede out of him. Um, if you use the pulling attack, which uses two spirit emblems. Now that I use mortal draw, I don't have those anymore. So I'm just scrambling to try to get it there. I thought I would get it. I thought I was in a good enough position, but I was too close to him. So I was like, no, no, we're done here. Just die. Um, yeah, the ideal there is to have, I had three emblems left. So you still have the Yash sugar. You want to deflect him twice, get him on the ground, use the spear. It does a ton of posture damage, pulling the, um, pulling the centipede out of him, but unfortunately I don't get to showcase it here. But he's dead and that's what matters. And I think I saved like a ton of time here. I should, cause I'm pretty sure I died to him in the splits I'm running against. It is insane to me how bad those splits were like watching this back now. Cause I think I ran this, this, this was like four or five days ago now, but it is insane to me how bad that sequence of events was for the last like five or six splits and how I'm still very much ahead <laughs> and how I could be much further ahead. If I remember correctly, the end of my run is a lot less sloppy. So there's that to look forward to. Um, but here we're going to go get seven spear. And this is another trick if you want to use for general purposes. This isn't even just speed running. This is, this is a very foolproof way, foolproof way to trivialize seven spear. Use the gachi, go over here to the side. We're going to switch to Akko. We're going to jump behind him. Unfortunately, be really careful. Do not touch that basket. If you touch that basket, he will come over here and be like, huh? Who touched that basket? And he will sit here for like a solid 15 seconds or eternity, it feels like. But eventually, he he will relent. He will stop looking at the very suspicious basket. He will turn around there <laughs> and then use Akko. Make sure you're close to him. Go up. Stealth blow. Then we're going to jump in Mortal Blade. As you can see, it's going to do a ton of damage. Firecracker, jump mortal blade. Now, if he didn't def I don't know why I didn't kill there, but normally that actually just kills him. But just deflect once and he's good. Easy peasy. The one thing to note, because we will be doing that a lot in the run, when you have uh, Gachi Sugar on for stealth, the moment you use another sugar, it overrides the previous one. So making sure you're within death blow range is very key because you lose that stealth. For him, it doesn't really matter because I think you can actually just sneak up behind him naturally, but um, it's to make sure he doesn't see you when you're coming from the other side, the reason you use it. But for other bosses, it will matter, and I'll point that out when it comes along, um, if I remember. It's crazy to me that uh, this is flying by. We're already like halfway through the run. So now we're going to go face Al and um, make sure you grab this Yash. Al is very much the same as Genichiro. Typically, you trap him in a door and just basically kill him by exploiting the map. I think that's a glitch, so I decided not to do it. I actually want to fight the owl. Granted, the way I fight the owl is kind of an AI loop. Um, kind of. Not really, because it's not consistent. Like, he still kind of does what he wants, but it does bait certain attacks. But... It is a lot harder to execute. Not that it's easy to get him in the wall. It actually can be kind of a pain to get him where you need to for the loop anyway. But anywho, you'll see how I do this. It's, again, something you could in theory use for a standard run, but it's not the easiest to execute. And I think I screw up a little bit here. I might even die. We'll see. So I'm going to use Divine Confetti right away. And the reason I'm going to do that is Divine Confetti, if you don't know, it does more vitality damage. And that's what we're going for here on now. So my goal here is to hit him until he deflects once. Once he deflects once, I'm going to try to dodge through his sword and get behind him. Use what little iframes you do have in this game to get behind him. I do a miserable job to start there. Ugh. But try to rally. You got to be really careful to run attack because you need to dodge to the right side. I tend to dodge to my left. When that one comes, you need to dodge to the right. Um... 
I can see in hindsight what I'm doing wrong here, and I think I mention it when I'm running actually. I'm doing a really poor job of panning the camera. That's why this strategy can be difficult. When you do it, it's not just a matter of getting behind him. You need to pan the camera so the camera is facing him. Like facing with to your back, to him in front of you, because that will cause him to shift in a way where he'll try to attack you again and you can just keep looping behind him. The thing is it can bait a couple different attacks. It's not 100% foolproof. He can do a swipe, which is the most common thing to see, but he'll also try to step on you. Sometimes he'll throw the shuriken and do the slam and other times he'll just decide to jump backward and then do that like swipe attack. Like it, he still does his full host of moves. This just seems to bait him into doing less of his more troublesome moves. And it also attacks his vitality, which is the thing to do. Now, the one thing to note here that I did not do, and now I'm realizing why I didn't kill Seven Spear with the two Mortal Blades, is I forgot to use the attack power from the Guardian Ape. After you idle out after grabbing the Lotus of the Palace, make sure you use the attack power for Guardian Ape, because I made this way harder than I needed to. It wouldn't have saved me there. I was still performing terribly, but um, <laughs> it, it'll help. Uh, attack, newsflash, attack power helps. It makes a difference. Uh, anyway, this time I'm gonna win. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do better. Spoiler alert. But no divine confetti. So you'll see I dodge behind him. Then he deflects. I wait a second. Dodge behind again. Got him three times. I didn't expect that, so I didn't keep hitting. Dodge behind him. This is the general sort of rhythm of what you do. The thing is, like I said, you can see right there, he tried to step on me. You gotta be ready for that stuff. You gotta be ready for him to jump back like that, and you gotta be ready to switch the side you're dodging to because you need to dodge into the side he's using the sword on. And as you can see there, sometimes he'll just deflect and get through what you're doing. It's not 100% consistent. You need to practice it, and you need to get used to him moving through things. On PC, it's very easy to set up save states. Um, just look at speedrun.com and how to see it to figure that out, but... Um, the one thing I do mix in, as you see there, oh, that dodge, whoo, um, <laughs> sorry, as you, if, if he does the two shuriken, I know he's going to do the slam, so when he does the two shuriken, I try to jump in Mortal Blade, because it does a little bit of extra damage, uh, fun fact, while I practice him, that I did not ever realize about him, if you jump while he does the stomp, where he spawns the smoke in the second phase, you actually will not be affected by it, like, it will not do that to you, it will not cover your eyes, um, cool little fun fact. That was scary because he was going to do that firecracker attack, but I missed. And then now he threw the shuriken at me, which is a great attack, but he's far away. I didn't realize he'd hit me with a poison thing, so I couldn't heal or the bomb or whatever. And he threw poison and I'm near the poison and I still need to heal. And he decided to do that attack, which honestly probably saved me because he can kill me in one hit with certain attacks. Like if he had done that when I healed, he might've killed me, but because he did that just jumping slam, he kind of saved me. And then I was like, okay, get your head on straight, get back into a rhythm. I'm actually really glad that the fight went this way for the purposes of showing in this video because I've actually had a couple fights with him where he really does just get looped and it goes completely swimmingly. There's no problems and it makes it just look super easy, it makes me look super badass, but I completely uh, had a rough time here. I, I had a rough time here, but Al's a tough fight, man. Al's a tough fight, especially when you don't use your attack power like you were supposed to, you dingus. But I'm going to secure the victory here. I didn't care about getting hit by his little orb thing because I know I'm not. I'm either going to die or, <laughs> or win. And I won. Good stuff. Uh, and now I'm going to take a sip of water because I am going to be doing a lot of talking, but the game is sure going to be doing a lot of talking because as you can see, our next split is exposition. There's so much talking here. Get ready for it. So because uh, because Emma or because the sculptor got dragon rot, we actually need to rest to get Emma to come back here. So rest to get Emma back, and then I, this is where I realized, like, dude, yeah, you see my head like shake there. It's because like, dude, I didn't use the guardian ape attack power. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Anyway, use both the attack power things. I don't think we acquire any skills here. I think I'm just confused about what I'm doing at this point. Um, but you can get the third prayer necklace, so do that. And then now we got to do a lot of talking. So the first thing we got to do is talk to Emma once. Make sure we go through all the dialogue. This is where, once again, the super secret technique of mashing the X button in just the right way, like at just the right speed, at just the right rhythm gets important because you go through so much dialogue here. Um, you need to talk to Emma once, then 
I'm actually while we're while we're talking about this, I apologize if you're mouse clicks. I'm actually gonna bring up my speedrun notes because I'm trying to remember just how many times you have to talk to Kuro in them here. It's a lot. Like I think you talk to Kuro like 12 times, <laughs> and the reason you talk to them so much is what you're supposed to do normally is you come back and you progressively as you do these things as you kill the monk as you kill the guardian ape you know whatever um you're supposed to be talking to kuro and learning more about the story learning more about what you're doing and making it like this collaborative effort and here you're just like kirk kuro i've done a couple of playthroughs just shush sh 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 your pie hole i got this um but he does not shush his pie hole and you need to talk to him a lot so it's talk to emma once talk to kuro three times then you gotta talk to Emma once or twice if she got the dra if you got Dragon Rot, which I did, so I talked to her twice. Now you gotta talk to Kuro three times. Then you gotta burn the incense. Then you gotta talk to Kuro again. So it's not twelve times, but it sure as hell feels like it. Um, so I think we're on the second of the three times of talking to Kuro for the second set of three. Yeah. If you see me jump like that, the reason is because I'm like I'm mashing X so much that sometimes when I come out of dialogue, I end up jumping. Burn the incense, and then we uh, cut Kuro with the Mortal Blade. Skip that cutscene. I think it, it's not actually like a scene, but I think it takes up camera time. If that makes sense. Like, I, I, there's an off-screen cutscene. Anyway, talk to him one more time. And then we're done talking to him, but we need to go eavesdrop, because even though we're not going for, like, the other endings, we do need to fight Father Al, so we do need to follow Emma's questline to get the bell. So after you eavesdrop, rest here, that will send Emma upstairs. Then we need to go exhaust her dialogue up here, which it's just one run through, but I think you have to choose like a dialogue option. You you go with the first option right here. Yeah, I agree. Kuro can't die or something like that. Um, go here, grab this idol. Don't jump. <laughs> grab this idol and then rest. Uh, that will basically refresh Emma so that you can talk to her again and then this is the last bit of dialogue here it's a lot of dialogue it's a lot of remembering to talk but it is talk to Emma talk to Kuro three times talk to Emma talk to Kuro three times go behind the wall and eavesdrop rest talk to Emma rest talk to Emma rest and then that is where I split even though we're about to go talk to Emma one more time we're just doing it at a slightly different position than we were before so jump to the left side here, not to where Ishin's little tower is, but the tower other than that. Run around the back and don't miss and hug a wall. Grab the gachi and then jump on down to Emma. And talk to her one more time. This will set the sequence where she will go to the sculptor and later we'll go there and we'll find her talking to the sculptor. If you eavesdrop, you can get the bell from her. So we're, we're pretty much have all the requirements we need to get to Father Al now. But what we're going to do is we're going to run around here. I'm going to go up here and use uh, Yash Sugar. But first, I want to equip Divine Confetti. I used it out of my inventory, but that's not what I'm supposed to do here. I do want to equip it over the idol here. Um, but I didn't. I forgot. But Yash and Divine Confetti. And we are going to fight our first of five Headless. I love fighting Headless. I don't. I hate Headless. Headless is easily my least favorite mini boss in this game. But... Fortunately, there's at least some consistency with uh, the underwater headless. The attack here is the one you want and you will eventually get. If you just swerve to the left while that grab is going on, you can just keep mashing R1 while you swerve to the left and it's easy peasy. And you will eventually stun headless like I did at the end there. The only attack you got to be really careful of is the um, spin. You always kind of want to stay to his left or right because if you're right under where the sword is, the spin hitbox will start right away and it will really screw you. Um, my controller disconnected there, which was nice. Uh, make sure you grab that, uh, Yash, or I think it was Yash, in the corner after you kill the Underwater Headless, but yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to just rotate around the Headless. The only other two attacks are like, uh, the one where it f throws a sword slash across and like it uh, has those little black tendrils that fly out, which that's a good attack to get when you're near it because it can't really do anything to you, but... It's actually surprisingly easy. Like, once you've done it a few times, it's very easy. Just remember to rotate around. Anyway, go down to that tree right there. Use a uh, Gachi Sugar. Then you're going to see here what I talk about. Wait until you can see the Stealth Blow mark. Use the Akko. And then instantly go for the Stealth Blow. This is a little bit complex. We're going to use the Spear here to pull. 
Then we need to jump and use Mortal Blade. You can see I got quite a bit out of it. Use Firecracker, jump, and use Mortal Blade again. The reason I say that's complex is you're just doing so much. You use two sugars, then you have to get the stealth blow, then you switch to the spear, you have to pull with the spear, then you have to jump into a Mortal Blade, then you have to switch to the Firecracker, then you have to do another Mortal Blade jumping. It's a lot. So, I believe in the most optimized run, you actually go to the other headless here that is down past uh, the cave over there, but I don't do it. I grab the idol there and don't worry about that. Just say, I'll save that headless for later. Um, actually, you know what? I actually think now that I'm watching this back, I don't think I kill that headless in this run. <laughs> I think I forgot about it. Oh, oh, okay. We'll, we'll store that in the memory bank and then worry about it for later. Oh Lord, oh no. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Look, if I forgot a single headless and I just managed to forget that, then I'm still calling it how to beat it in under two hours because in theory, if you went under and got the head, I'm sorry, that, that's clickbait, isn't it? Is that is that clickbait? It probably is clickbait. Anyway, shit, We're, okay. You run up, use the Yash, jump, use two more, use the mortal blade once, jump into the mortal blade and then uh, just get the monk and uh, do it. <laughs> I'm so frazzled. I actually do not think I killed that. I do not think I killed that headless because I messed up my splits because I had to, I moved them around, but I, dude, oh Lord. Anyway, this is actually kind of tough. This, this took quite a bit of practice to get used to this. It really helps to use the Yash and then do that one jumping mortal blade, but just make sure you only use it once because we need the spirit emblems otherwise. Um, just, just practice. You gotta deflect there. You gotta worry about the Makiris and the, and the sweeps. But, go up here, get the stealth blow. And then here, this is foolproof. It works consistently. Just need to use Yash Sugar. R1, once you see Rev back, turn to the right and Firecracker. The reason you do that is sometimes when you do it forward, the Firecrackers end up behind the monk and don't work. So, we're just hitting five times Firecrackering. That's it. It's gonna die. Um, just... When we run out of firecrackers, I think we have one firecracker left here. Yeah, firecracker. Then this time, the last time, you hit six times. So one extra hit, and boom. Dude, I cannot believe that. I'm shook. I'm shook right now. I, I hope I killed that headless, but I don't think I did. I really don't. Because I went on muscle memory, and I think I just assumed it was dead. Oh, <laughs> I hope I killed it. Anyway. If I didn't, like I said, I know I can kill it. I'm gonna prove to you that I can kill other headless, and, and you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, viewer, you will. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in myself if I didn't. Uh, anyway, rest. I use the attack power from the monk there, but it doesn't, it doesn't really make a difference because we're gonna grab another idol. Um, anyway, the only reason I'm grabbing the idol is the potential of screwing up what we're about to do. But once you've done it a couple times, it's actually more easy than you might think. Um, so run ahead here. We're gonna leap over this, then one, two, three, four, swim right into this corner, delay a second, and then go down. If you do that and you're in that corner, the lightning will actually hit that corner. And then if you swim very fast and down to and hug the right, the lightning will just completely miss you. Um, and then going through here is actually pretty consistent as well. You hug the top left, and you wait in this little pagoda. It notices you, you just kind of wait in the middle there on the left side. It runs through, hurts itself when it hits the wall, gets stunned, and then just swim on through. And now, we are gonna go up and grab the idol, and then we're gonna go get the other couple mini bosses that are in this area, and then we are going to leave. Let me drink some water real quick. So you need to grab this idol so we can come back for Divine Dragon and the Shichiman Warrior later. But for now, um, that's where you could upgrade attack power if you don't want to grab that other idol. We do have to grab that idol, so that's the more natural place to upgrade attack power if you're confident you won't die after the monk. I guess if you grab the idol before monk, it doesn't really make sense to grab the one after as well. But it, I guess that depends on how you performed on monk. Of Like, if you're low on health, then maybe it does make sense. I don't know. Anywho, I'm just going to run on forward. I have my shuriken equipped. You can't see because of my head. I didn't realize that until now. I would have moved my head over. Um, but... When it jumps up, you can actually just toss a shuriken, boom, that does like a decent amount, and then just mortal blade once and boom, it's dead. Very easy, you can just use R1 if you don't feel like using mortal blades. We're gonna use a gachi sugar here, and then I noticed here I did not put uh, divine over my idol, because we want divine confetti. 
You should always use divine confetti first because it lasts longer, by the way. That's just a note. I don't do it every time, but you should get in the practice of doing that. Jump down and then go diagonally downward to the headless. The reason we use gotcha here is the other headless will not notice you. And then the same principle as the other underwater headless applies here. You can see I'm trying to tilt my way to the left there, but it doesn't work that well. In theory, you would, I don't know what happened there. I actually got hit, but I didn't get grabbed. I should be grateful. Um, yeah, you you want to be you want to be careful for the spin. In theory, I guess you could go to the right side because you could predict it better. But I got lucky there that it was about to do it again, but the hitbox didn't start and I killed it. Um, again, it's just rotating around, and whenever it's going to do the spin, you just need to swim away and then just swim back in. Pretty easy peasy once you've done it a few times. But unfortunately, like I mentioned before, if you run out of items, then that stuff gets a lot more complicated. Uh, so we're going to run through here and kill the bull, and then we're going to go back to the temple. This is pretty easy. Uh, this strat is extremely consistent. I've never failed it once, and I never used to do this either. This is my first time trying it, um, like these runs. Just run behind its ass, throw a firecracker, booty on fuego, and uh, yeah, just make sure you run diagonally to that wall so it moves over that way, and just grab those two items, and it's dead. Very nice. I guess that mechanic works because when you use the thing, like, it, when it is almost dead, it has this mechanic where it does that, like it revs up and kind of runs around and hits a wall and falls over. Using the firecrackers behind it scares it into doing that, so it just works. Um, but, yeah, make sure you grab those two items, get the bull, and now we are going to idle back to the temple. Which, now we can, uh, now we can get the bell. Which we shall do. So go around the back of the temple, as you can see, Aerith is in place. Go around the back of the temple, eavesdrop, and then after that, we're just going to go back around and talk to Emma. It actually, like the beginning of the game, is faster to not jump straight up, but it is faster to jump forward in this, um, since the game forces you to walk. Just go ahead and talk to Emma, exhaust her dialogue, and I believe you have to pick the second option. Yeah, you don't want to pick Gord Seed. Actually, do you even want to pick that? Maybe you do. I don't, I don't actually don't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, from there, you can actually cancel out of a dialogue and you're fine. Once you have the bell, that's all you need. Because you're not continuing that quest line any further. You're just killing the owl. Um, so yeah, then we're going to go back here. And now we are going to go to Ashna Outskirts Underbridge Valley. Because we are going to kill the general that's out here. Because we're about to go face the Divine Dragon. And we don't want to... Um, we we don't want to leave this guy. This guy will uh, go away if we do this before then. Um, so replace Akko Sugar there with the Yasha Spirit Fall that we got from the Underwater Headless. Going to jump up here and use it. Switch to the Shuriken because we'll be able to kill these guys um, nicely. Just toss two on that guy. You need to toss three at this guy. I think I only tossed two here. Yeah, I only tossed two. Fortunately, he didn't get alerted. Um, stealth blow this guy for one of his health bars. Then just jump in Mortal Blade and then, or just don't because you're bad at doing the jumping Mortal Blade. And then I think it's just deflect once. Yeah, there you go. And then got it. So just like before with after killing the Lone Warrior, you, in the optimal run, you actually go kill the Headless over behind us, or ahead of us, I should say. But I'm actually going to grab the Divine Confetti and then <laughs> I meant to use the Idol there, which is why it's good we had grabbed an extra Gachi. I forgot that I didn't have it equipped anymore. I was using muscle memory, even though the divine confetti is where it would have been. But uh, yeah, we're going to use this and we're going to go to um, Last Rested. And from here, we're just going to go on to Divine Dragon. The reason I did this is because the two headless you fight this early in the run, they are really, really, really annoying to fight at this level of attack power and uh, vitality. So I decided to leave them for later in the run, which... That was a addition I only or a change I only made in like the last two or three runs I attempted, so that may be why I potentially forgot one of them. Uh, but they're really both the same. Like it's basically the same fight, just in two different locations. Um, I really hope I didn't forget that headless man. I really don't. I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, what does it matter? It is it really about how many mini bosses and bosses we killed? Isn't it about how many we killed along the way? I that doesn't work. Fuck, <laughs> because because if we if it's about how many we killed along the way, then we should have killed them all. Uh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. 
I'm, I'll worry about it for the both of us. Uh, so go up to Divine Dragon, and this is just a standard fight. There is a way to do this faster in, um, I was going to say in theory, but it's, it's, it's not a theory. It works. <laughs> it is not a theoretical thing. It totally works, but I don't do it because I haven't practiced it, and I didn't care to really. Um, this first phase is just make sure you kill one of them, because I actually don't think they spawn the trees until you've killed one of them. I tried it one time, and it took forever. Get them to spawn the tree, then sweep, and yeah. I did not realize you could do that in my first playthrough. I killed them all individually. I did not realize that was a thing. It's a very cool thing. Like, it's a very cool feature of this fight. It would be cool if you could do that with other things that you air death blowed in this game. <laughs> could you imagine the guy on the outside of Ashna Castle, the mini boss that killed me twice? Could you imagine if I stealth blowed him and then swung him around to kill all the gunmen? That would be pretty nice. I feel like I've got some great ideas here. FromSoft, hit me up. Uh, don't do what I did here. Make sure you don't walk too far away from them, because if you get too far away, then it gets hard to stealth blow. I mean, fortunately enough, dragons appeared that it wasn't a problem, and the one moved closer to me, but yeah. All good, all good. Then run here so you don't get pushed back as far. And so the way the strategy works is you want to throw one lightning, and then after that, nice hit, after that, you want to run forward, use Yash Sugar, and then you want to bait an attack where the dragon does this. And what you can actually do is you can mortal draw the body of the dragon, and that will actually do vitality damage to it. But I don't bother with it because I haven't practiced it, so it's just use the Yash and throw lightning as normal. You also might notice that the weapon is looking a little bit cooler. Not that the other weapon doesn't look cool. The other weapon's like a legendary Japanese weapon, and it looks pretty cool, but, you know... Ludwig's Moonlight Greatsword is pretty dope. So I managed to grab the lightning there. That's pretty nice. I actually think I learned a valuable lesson in this fight, if I'm not mistaken. I think I'm, gonna, I think I'm about to learn it right here, which is I did not realize if you just stand on top of these trees, lightning can actually... I'm not going to learn it quite yet. Maybe, maybe it was in this run. Maybe, maybe I was smart in this run. Maybe. Nope, nope, definitely not, definitely not. I'm totally jumping up there. I, I can, dude, I can smell it. I can smell it. I'm going to do it, yep. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to wait for the lightning to appear. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. No, you can't wait on the ground for lightning. That's not how it works. <laughs> well, I'm in a tree. That's not technically the ground, but you can't wait in the ground of the tree for the lightning. Otherwise, <laughs> that'll happen. And then, uh, insult to injury again, the thing blows me back. Thank you for blowing me, Divine Dragon. What a true joy it was. Uh, I love this fight. I really do. This fight has not aged poorly for me at all. I still love it just as much as I did the first day. But in terms of speedrunning, it's a bit of an inconvenience just because if you're not doing the Mortal Draw strat, it takes a while. And getting blown back can be frustrating just because it wastes time. But it is what it is. My time is not good enough to be worried about that anyway. Anywho, we are going to um, just run to the right and left. Like, there, there's really not much to it. The, the only thing that changes with this, like, if it does the unblockable, you just jump. That's it. I used to think this part was actually like, man, this is the part where, okay, like, Divine Dragon, you know, pretty much cakewalk. But then this part, this part right here, this is hard. And then it's like, no, it's not. You, you legit just run in one direction, just jump. And then you just, yep. It's six hits. It's it's barely anything at all. <laughs> There's no mix up to it either. I don't believe. I think it's always one like slash two unblockable sweep ones and then three slashes. <laughs> it's very easy. And the fight is always there. Actually, is a way to grapple up to the hand, but for some reason I didn't get it here because I'm bad, probably. Um, same with the Moonlight Greatsword. The hitbox is the same as the other sword, so just make. <laughs> If you have the Moonlight Greatsword installed, make sure you run up the middle, because you might fall off if you go on the outside of it. I'm not totally sure. I don't know how... I imagine you would, because it's the same hitbox, so I imagine, like, unless the walk-up box of the sword is, like, bigger than the sword itself. I'm getting real philosophical with texture boxes here, and I'm going to stop. <laughs> but, hey... Despite all the screw-ups, we are now 13 minutes ahead. That's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Now you're going to see LOL Really. If you've seen my speedruns before, you know I always have an LOL Really. I actually let my stream on Twitch. I stream on Twitch, by the way. I never mention that anymore, but I do. Um, I had my stream. I let them vote what was going to be the LOL Really since I had 48 splits, and I was like, what is it going to be? And 
someone in chat mentioned like, you know, it should be a boss that is normally really hard, but you make look like a joke. So much to maybe your surprise, the boss I'm about to make a joke is the Headless Ape duo. So make sure you use the attack power from the Divine Dragon before you come here. Then we're gonna Divine Confetti, Yash Spirit Fall. Then I'm gonna kind of curve here, fall down, and R1. I missed, so you can get two hits as you fall, but all you're doing here is R1. Um, wow, I actually even got hit there. R1 eight times. Don't screw up your Jumping Mortal Blade, and then look at that, already one bar down. And then you're gonna be like, but no, the second ape's gonna come. No, it's not. It absolutely is not. Actually, it is, but <laughs> that's because I screwed up. Normally, if you don't get hit there, the ape will be on the like more to the left, and you can actually jump to the right and stop it from even calling in the ape, because um, you stun it with the mortal blade, which it speaks for itself. It's legit just R1 eight times, use jumping mortal blade once, and then second phase is use jumping mortal blade twice, and you win. It's so nice, and the thing, the thing that I love about a strat like this is it doesn't use anything crazy. There's no glitch. There's nothing. It's legitimately just current patch mortal draw is broken as hell. Use a Yash Spirit Fall or a Yash Sugar Divine Confetti, and you are golden. As long as you've gotten all the attack power I have, and in theory you could wait even longer. You could get the Dragon Mask now that you've been to Fountainhead, and you could um, get like 15 attack power before you came here, and I'm sure you could kill it in like two hits. All of this, all of this, man. LOL really gives me, it gives me life. It gives me life. So do, the, so do the four seconds I saved. Good stuff, good stuff. Now, that is a very easy strategy to execute. You can do that, like, I guarantee you, you could pop on the game right now, go do it, and I'm sure you would lo look like a god, feel like a god, and it's because you are. This strat is a little bit more big brain, galaxy brain, if you will, if you're looking at the split. Um, just because of what it requires you to do is so specific and kind of weird. Um, we're going to go kill the fire drunkard. Uh, Shigakichi, I think is his name. Uh, make sure you get the grapple there. But yeah, just you'll see now. Make sure you're a little bit more over to the right. That way you can jump down, grapple. And then I'm going to go around and grab a gachi sugar here. I'm actually going to jump back down behind me. And then to the left on the wall there is another gachi sugar. Gonna get that. Then I'm gonna actually grab the Underbridge Valley uh, idol here because I wasn't doing this before. I was, you know, just going on to do the Galaxy Brain strats, but because I'm gonna go back for the other headless, I actually want this because it makes sense to have it for later. Um, and this and this works totally fine. I, this is actually my first time ever attempting this, and I was like, I hope this strat still works when you grab the the shrine or the idol. It does. I can confirm. So use the gachi, then we're going to go to the left side here. We're going to go around. We use the gachi here so this guy will not notice you. You just run on the branch, jump to the left, then jump over, walk a little bit, and you can get a stealth blow, which is very nice. Now this is where it gets tricky. You want to grab him twice with a spear. Again, you need to hit uh, right trigger twice. Then jump past the box immediately flip over and switch to your firecrackers, run into that corner. If you do not run into that corner like I just did, it will not bait him. Instead, he'll drink from his sippy cup, and we do not want him drinking from his sippy cup. So, I repeat, jump forward past the boxes. That aggroes the people who shoot it and set it on fire. Then you want to pivot diagonally backward directly into that corner, and then move right backward, like directly backward from that corner. Just watch it back and that will get him there consistently every time. Then you firecracker, and then he gets blown up. He's got to jump in, Warner Blade, easy peasy. Now here, make sure you hook to the left a little bit so you can give uh, give the bell the suck, like the suck thing where you suck in the money, you can suck the bell. The, the mom is dead, I think, now, but the bell, you can suck it. So get it, because we need it. And then you are going to spend all of your remaining Sen on Divine Confetti, which... I'm pretty sure I was short on Sen here. Like, you could definitely give the mini bosses the suck, too. Because if you do, then you get more money from them. That would definitely be advisable. But I also died a lot, which is why I lost money. Like, I think when you die, you lose half of your Sen. So, that didn't help. But anyway, we're getting the idol for Demon of Hatred, who is, in my opinion, the hardest boss in this run, for sure. And just the hardest boss in this game in general, by a large margin. But... We're not going to fight it now, of course, because there's other attack power we can get and more beads and whatnot, so there's no reason to be fighting it right now. So, uh, we grabbed a couple skills from the Ashna tree there. I believe it was the Carps and the... Uh, 
Ichimanji, the excuse me, the Carps and the Shinobi's body abilities. Kind of glazed over it, I apologize. Um, but you can watch it back to see. Then we are going to the Shichiman Warrior. It's here I realized I didn't have the pacifying agent. Normally you use it out of your inventory, and I'm like, well, I've never done this without the pacifying agent. I hope it works. So for him, you want to hook to his right. If you hook to his right and spin around him, you'll be able to just get him. But there... <laughs> I guess that's on me. Like, you can see I'm upset here, but while it is dumb, it looks like if I had stopped hitting R1 and faced him, I probably could have gotten the death blow, but for some reason, because it was angled, it wasn't gonna give it to me. And then what you know what you want to avoid, you never want to hit him from the front. Because if you hit him <laughs> Because if you hit him from the front, he does that thing where he like blocks, and when he blocks, he teleports, and then he does the big Kamehameha wave of terror. And you want him to do that as little as possible because the more you can keep him close is, is ideal. That's why you circle around his back. Because I believe if you stay in front of him, he only lets you get like six hits before he teleports and you need eight to kill him. So you'll get to see me do it again here, this time right. Um, I kind of square up for him for the first like two or three hits and then you can see I spin around to his back. This time I make sure I square up against him so I'm like looking at him and get the stealth blow. Now, there is a certain way you can like run over here and manipulate him into appearing in the corner where you see. The thing is, I ran a little bit too far away, so he's gonna blast me here. The reason I run straight at him is there's actually a lapse in the hitbox. I think it's intentional. Like, if you actually get right up in front of him, then he will not hit you with the blast. So you can run directly toward him and just like have, you can basically run through the front of the blast. But unfortunately, you won't get to see me do it against him because I am uh, not doing a great job, but I believe I get him here. Kind of an awkward spot because he's in the corner. I try my best to angle around him so he doesn't block me and get teleported away, but extremely sloppy, also a death, but hey, I got through it. I had to use an extra divine confetti though, which isn't fortunate because those are very limited in this run. So that is unfortunate, but we did it. And that's what matters. So now we are going to go to Harada Estate. I was gonna say we're starting to wrap things up, but we're but we're not. <laughs> I feel like we are because we're getting toward the end of my time, but there's so many mini bosses in the end of this run because we don't need much else now. Like other than Harada, we basically have every area on the map unlocked. We just need to go kill a bunch of mini bosses. But here, we want to go up to the thing. We need to fit the um, finger whistle. I actually didn't know this. You need to fit the finger whistle because the Shichiman warrior in the Headless Ape Cave will not appear until you fit the finger whistle. I had no idea about that. One run I got really confused. I was like, why isn't it there? What the hell happened? And it's, you got to do the finger whistle. So just a, just a heads up on that because we do need that later. <laughs> I tried to jump on that. You can. You can see I'm super amused because... I was like, when I didn't get the jump, I pressed the button to grapple and it just didn't take. So I was like, come on game. Is this, is this how we're gonna be? Is this how we're gonna be right now? Is something about running this made me extremely salty. Like I normally am really chill when uh, playing games, but, and I, I, these games never get under my skin. I've, I've played them so much. Like I'm almost desensitized to it, but Something about playing this, I really just think it's how burnout I am. I've mentioned it already, I won't go into it too much more, but I'm just burnout on these games. But this was on my bucket list, so I was adamant I was gonna do this. Um, and that's why, uh, even if I didn't kill that headless, again, I'm titling the video the way I did, we're all gonna imagine, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody that I didn't kill the headless and no one will know. Except for every single one of you watching this, which is the only people we have to talk to about this, which makes this completely redundant, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Jump, uh, go to the left here into the flowers, gives you a little bit of cover, I, I guess. I don't think it matters. And then just jump Mortal Blade once. Just a single jump Mortal Blade kills this guy. The reason being, this is, you're not intended to go here like as soon as the game starts, but it's a very early game area. Like I think you're intended to at least go to Harada early on. I honestly think this guy's a tutorial for the Makiri counter. I think it's what he's meant to be. I don't think you're meant to kill Juzwo though, that's the thing. I think Juzwo is supposed to be like a blockade and you're like, oh, maybe I should come back later after I get a little bit more attack power. Um, not to say you can't kill him early on, you can, he's just kind of tough. Anyway, you need to kill him because he's a mini boss, of course. That's the afterthought. I called him an afterthought because I honestly forgot he existed in terms of this run until I was like, oh yeah, I guess that guy's a thing. 
Um, then we got to run up here and talk to Al because we need the... Um, I believe he gives you the key to the mat you need to move for Lady Butterfly. Yeah, the Hidden Temple key. Don't ask me how there's a key to a mat. Wait, no, there's not a key to the mat. There's a door behind the mat. I'm an idiot. Anyway, uh, that sets the flame so you can't move back, but it doesn't matter because we ain't going that way. We're going this way. Just jump, grapple, move around. Then we're going to do a little U-turn. And then we're going to go to like one of my favorite little things in Sekiro. I don't know why they didn't use this more, but I thought these were so cool. It reminded me of like Metroid Prime with Samus like jumping and bouncing on the walls. Like so cool, man. It's such a little like kind of a relevant thing, but I just love it. So I wish I wish it was I wish it existed more, but it doesn't. Anyway, you don't have to grab the idol here. I decided to and then didn't rest. Um, I, I guess because I thought I had enough healing and I was confident that I'd be able to make it through this because this this is a really cool again cool tech. If you take anything away from this run, it's that I'm a liar about killing the last headless in under two hours, and uh, this this has some really cool tech that you can use in normal runs. So use Agachi Sugar, which you can find in the first area, so you could, in theory, do this. And the Shuriken. We're going to slide over here, go behind this guy, use two Shuriken, and you can actually get a stealth blow from inside Juzuo's asshole. Look at this. Look at this. Get up inside of him. Get up inside that asshole, and then stealth blow him. Like I said, you got to use Yash Spirit Fall, so just be really careful. You want to get the stealth blow right away. You want to make sure you're in position. Don't get too close to his asshole because he's a little sensitive, so you got to be careful. Um, also, don't mess up your jumping mortal blade like I did. Again. <laughs> I'm so bad at the jumping mortal blade. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Firecracker, use the mortal blade, dodge, rally, do something, survive, endure, and win. Sloppy as hell. But really what you're supposed to do there is after the stealth blow, you jump into a single mortal blade, and then you firecracker, and then you do a jumping double mortal blade. Um, but I screwed it up. Anyway, I'm just going to rest here just for safety purposes, but Lady Butterfly is debatably another contender for LOL really in this run, just because if, if you execute it right, it's very easy to do. Now, we're actually going to use the Tonto, the Samorial... Samorial? 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 Why can I not say that word? Sem ceremonial! Oh my god! Oh, my brain! Please. Uh, anyway, we're going to use the Tonto and then Spirit Fall before we go in. And then we are going to hopefully use Firecracker on her. I don't think it works. Yeah, I tried, but it didn't get it. Firecracker, jump. You can see Mortal Blade just obliterates her HP. Um, unfortunately, if you got the full, like, if she didn't block the second one, you'd get... I think she just dies, but... Uh, maybe not dies, but it does a lot of damage. But anyway, I was like, that's fine, whatever, lady. And then I was like, okay, just move back, and here you go. Uh, probably only do a single mortal blade there, not two, because it takes more spirit emblems, but the, the difficulty with that is if you do a single, obviously you want to follow up and attack with R1, but I couldn't do that. Anyway, Tonto, we're going to use a regular Yash Sugar here, and then as soon as her health bar pops up, you use it while standing on this rock, then jump, and she's right there, ready to take it. Yeah, you can see what the full one does there, and then just jump over her head, and then sh she dead. Well, well rhymed, my boy. I don't know why I just called myself my boy, but yeah. My brain melts when I do these commentaries because it's not as if I plan this. I don't, I don't think it's... It probably doesn't sound like I do. I legit just watched this run back and ramble. I hope it's interesting. I feel like we're hanging out. I'm having a good time. I hope you... <laughs> I'm going to stop. <laughs> okay. She dead. And now we need to do another one. By another one, I mean another Lone, lone Shadow and also another Harada. Um, I, you don't get an idol when you go to Harada, so if, if you feel like you need a heal or recovery or anything here, go ahead and just rest. I decided to do that, but also I like to use the prayer necklace here because um, it's really difficult to rest at the next idol after the Lone Shadow because there's this big fat guy with a shield who chases you, as you will see. Oh, wait, you should do this anyway because you're using attack power. I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. You definitely want to use this because you want, you want the attack power and you want the beads and then rest and then look at that. We got we got a nice little fat health bar going. I like it. I like it. Make sure we grab the prosthetic text. I think we were supposed to do that when we got the finger whistle, but I think I forgot because I think that's there. Yeah, you want to get it, and then we need to get some skills here. We want to get uh, chasing slice, midair prosthetic tool, and the other um, karma things. Maybe they weren't karmas in the other tree for the Ashina tree. I don't think they were then. 
I'll have to go back and see what they were, but it, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, just watch what I do as far as the upgrades. Um, but yeah, we want to upgrade those because we're going to need mid-air uh, prosthetic tools, mid-air firecrackers in particular. Um, for this guy, Tonto, Spiritfall, then you want to run... Wait, what did I do here? Oh, I didn't, I didn't rest. That's what I did. Did I not? I guess I didn't. Because as you can see, it's hard to see because my body's in the way, but I have plus two from the Tonto after using Spiritfall, but I think I only have two Spirit Emblems. I'm pretty sure that's what happened there. So just make sure you rest. Because you need to have Spirit Emblems uh, for <laughs> all the preceding fights. Yeah, you can see, now you can see I have 20. So I guess it was just two before. Anyway, idled back and rested. Normally you would just rest and have the Spirit Emblems because that's what I said to do. And it'd be totally fine. See, look at this. If I just did all of this and then did that headless, like, if I just didn't make these mistakes, it's just easy. Just just play the game. It's easy. Just do it. It's easy. <laughs> it's not. This is a hard run. I promise you. Uh, so we're going to use the Tonto Spearfall. Run past him to the left and get just past him. That way you can get that blow behind to get a little bit of extra, extra juice off the Mortal Blade and then get absolutely obliterated because you're terrible at this game. What you want to do there is deflect him a couple times, mix in a little R1s. I panicked and got up and started using Mortal Blade, and I shouldn't have, because <laughs> I should save that for his uh, his next part. But again, I'm really I'm really missing the. I don't know what that is actually. I don't know if, that I'm that familiar with that. He kind of like he hit with the sword, he kicked, and then he jump kicked. And as you can see, I'm like, bro, what was that? Where did you pull that move out of? Like, where where was that in your move Rolodex? I don't know where you pulled that out of, but why did you decide to do it right now? Yeah. It's fine. Just go in again. Same deal. Jump past. <laughs> I think I've messed up the mortal draw, but it ended up going in my favor. Um, like I said, most of the time I hit twice and then just kind of go from there. And there it works. Like, he gave me the kick attack, which is a very generous one. Now you want to jump over his head and do the mortal draw. I missed jumping over his head and I missed doing the mortal draw, so I'm a superstar. But and th and that's why you don't want to do it from the front. You can see from the front like how little damage it did. But also because I think I ran out of the Yash. Wait, no, I hadn't actually. It, I just ran out of it now. I'm just bad. I see. I see. I like the kick because you can get the Mercury off of it. But yeah, I got pretty fortunate attacks from him the second time. That kick is always really fortunate because it's got so many hits you can deflect and Mercury. That it really builds his posture quickly. But, yeah. So, gotta watch out for this shield guy. He really likes to mess with you. If you don't want this idol, it's not that much of an issue. But I want the idol because this Juzwo is a little meme -y. Um, I realized I couldn't rest. I wasn't going to wait. So, jump through the fire. Use the gourd. And then, this strat is pretty particular. I guess I don't heal because it, it makes sense to not heal. Use Gachi from the inventory. I'm actually going to go kill this guy over here because he's a bit of a pain in the ass. This is a waste of time. You can't do this without killing this guy, but it makes it so much easier, I promise. Then go at Juzuo from an angle. Make sure you do the stealth bow from the side because if you walk behind him, he'll notice you. So you want to do it in an angle from the side there. Hit this guy twice, jump over him, then use the blood smoke. We're going to use that so we can get a stealth blow on this guy. And now we're in a position to actually fight the last bar of Juzuo. So we're going to run over to the tree. You could fight near this tree to avoid the archer that I killed in the first place, but I don't like dealing with that. Instead, I like jumping in the air and just getting absolutely obliterated. Um, <laughs> I tried to mortal mortal draw there, but I missed the input because I'm really bad at the jumping mortal draw. It, it just, the input's weird for me. I don't, I don't know. There are people in chat telling me, like, it gets easier as you as you go. And I'm like, I, I guess it did get easier, but it still just feels awkward to me. Um, anywho, Juzuo down after two. You just do mortal, jumping mortal draw, firecracker, jumping mortal draw, or firecracker, mortal draw, mortal draw. This guy got fresh with me, but fortunately I got the idol before he got fresh with me. And I think I, yeah, I just fight him, but I did not realize this, this guy's, he's got some juice, like... He's not just some pushover. He actually takes a couple blows to kill, and I'm like, guy, 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 guy. What are you? What are you? What are, you, what are these big moves? Where are you jumping back to? Why are you revving up this thrust for like five seconds? Anyway, I want to rest because Father Al is coming up, so I wanted my revive back, and then I was like, well, crap. I'm only getting one of them back. Shame, shame. But that's what you get for sucking at this game. I promise I don't plan these rhymes. 
Not that they're that impressive. Um, <laughs> use the Tonto. Use Spirit Fall. We're going to jump straight into him. You get one shot, one opportunity to ambush the owl like this. And as you can see, it does a ton of posture damage. A lot of times they'll follow up with that sweep. It's so good when he does because you just jump over it and then mortal draw. Look, look at that health bar. Mortal draw, I'm telling you, man. And he fortunately does this again. And I'm like, dude, you're dead. You're done. Single mortal draw. Hit him. So close to not getting it. That's why doing the not doing two, it takes so long for him to put the mortal blade away. Anyway. Do a double moral draw from the ground right away. Then you're going to see I kind of run around here. The reason I do this, I'm healing with the Gord. I'm looking to use the Tonto because I want more Spirit Emblems. I really shouldn't here. I can see how low I am. I only have six now. Um, and now I'm looking for a window to use the Yash Sugar. I do finally find it. And then what I really want here is an attack from Al where he'll let me use Mortal Draw. I just decided to jump in there like a superhero and use it, which I really shouldn't have done. That was super, super bold. But... Uh, fortunately, my moves have been decent so far. The way I like to play this is just keep running away. That attack right there is where I like to jump in and do Mortal Draw. But as you can see, I have no Spirit Emblems left, so now I'm doing Baby Mortal Draw. This is another really good attack. Just wait. Like, this is one of the attacks that we, even when you're fighting him without using Mortal Draw and stuff like that, people say he's very hard, and he is, but that attack trivializes his second phase a lot because you can just keep running away and wait for him to use that thing. Um, as long as you get some vitality damage on him, it just takes forever for his posture to come back. Just super nice. I am spamming L1 like my life depends on it, because it does. Alright, good attack. Hit twice. Be always careful to move into the side of that attack, because if you do, he swipes with the sword instead. Try to jump in here, get some. It's very slow end to the second phase, but I was just like, at this point, I just don't want to fail this attempt as I almost fail this attempt. <laughs> Look how close that was, dude. Spooky. And then I'm like, yes, baby, yes. Gimme that Makiri, yes. Get out of here. I promise you, he can actually be quite a bit easier than that, and I made that way more convoluted and complicated than it needed to be. But hey, it's still a first try kill in a run I haven't practiced that much, so I'm, I'm happy with it, man. I'm happy with it. So we're going to wait and take the idol, and then we're going to get the attack power here. And then we have some uh, a, couple, a couple of mini bosses to clean up, and then we're going to go fight Ishin, I believe. I think we have, like, four mini bosses to do before Ishin. Because now we have the, um, the change in Ashina Castle, so. Now I'm motivated. Indeed I am. Indeed I am. I really don't think I killed that headless. I'm sorry I keep mentioning this. <laughs> but the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like, dude, I totally did not go kill that headless. But I'm not making the title How to Beat Every Boss and Mini Boss in Sekiro in Under Two Hours Except That One Headless, though. I'm not making that the title. I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> All right, jump through. You, I use the Tonto. I'm using Yashirika Spirit Fall. I'm going to jump in. Get him. It's the, it's, this is the same deal as the other one, which and by same deal, I mean use Jumping Mortal Draw and then get thrashed by this guy. And then look at look at this little dude. He's like, mm, when am I going to do it? When am I going to do it? And I'm like, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Exactly like that. That's exactly what I'm like. But then, look, see that punch. Look at this man. Get out of here. Give, give me it. Thank you. And fortunately, I managed to hit him with R1 because sometimes he follows up so quickly you can't. But close. But I got him. So make sure you grab that Yash Sugar, and then we're going to go up the stairs, and then I like to grab the idol here in case this fight goes awry. Most of the time it's not too bad, but it, it can be a little spooky. I realized I didn't rest. I'm sorry if I just burped into the microphone. I apologize. Um, it, it, it did, I meant to rest here. Didn't rest. Go into the door. We need to use the Gachi Sugar which I realize now we're running very low on. Um, excuse me. Open the door. Then we're going to sneak. Make sure you have Yashiriku Spirit Fall equipped. And then it's the same deal as the other shadow. Make sure you got the Stealth Blow Indicator. Spirit Fall, hit him. Then we're going to jump behind and Firecracker and then Jumping Mortal Blade. That should give us some nice attacks on him. Same deal. Jump, back, Firecracker, Mortal Draw. Both are dead, except he's not dead because it's I was too slow, but he's almost dead, and I will not choke. 
Very nice, very nice. I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. Like, things can go awry in that fight, but most of the time if they do, you're probably just gonna die. So that's why you take the idol until you're good at that fight. Like I'm not. This guy is fresh with me every time I open this door. I don't really know what to do about it. Just, I guess, hope that he doesn't. But I sip my sippy cup in his face. I jump down and I give a stealth blow to Shrek. Stealth blow is pretty easy to do. It's just make sure you time it right. Like in terms of when you press R1, you can end up like slamming R1 in air. But it's pretty easy after because it's really just use mortal draw twice and then he's basically dead. If I had been able to R1 him there twice, I think he would have been dead. But instead I ended up hitting the other guy and then get slammed. That damage is absurd, Shrek. All right. I get you're angry. We're up in your swamp, my guy. But <laughs> that damage is filthy. He did like 90% of my health bar for hitting me once. I know he's a big boy, but still. Ugh. Anywho, now we're going to go fight Seven Spear the second, which this is also going to be a fairly trivialized fight in terms of the strategies we use. So more good tech for you. More good tech. I think I'm going to rest here, right? Probably not, because I, I guess I wouldn't need to. This is the last fight you need Gachi Sugar for, but that's why, like, you can't screw up. That You've so few screw-ups in this run. I, th I think I used, like, one or two Yasha's on accident in places or had to reuse them, but... Yeah, you need to use it here. Make sure you stay on the outside. You can see there's kind of, like, a barrier or, a, like, rim, if you will, to this walkway. Hug that until you hit this point right here, and then you can kind of move in... You, and get behind him, same deal, Yash, and then get the stealth blow. Then we're going to do the same thing we did with the other guy. We're going to firecracker, jump behind, and use the moral draw. Um, he managed to hit me in the middle of the firecracker there. I think, got, I think he got me before the firecracker came out, but... Same deal as a lot of the bosses, just moral draw, firecracker, or firecracker, moral draw, firecracker, moral draw. And he done. It's really nice. Mortal Draw, again, is really, 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 really good on current patch. So if you have not been using it and you would like to play Sekiro, I highly recommend Mortal Draw. <laughs> it is very good. It is just, uh, it, it does eat through your Spirit Emblem, so I recommend using it for bosses only. Unless, like, bosses and mini-bosses. But, I feel like Spirit Emblems are a bit more easy to come by in a normal playthrough. I found myself running out of them sometimes, but... I maybe I didn't. I don't I don't really remember. It's been too long. Anywho, rest here because it's time for the big boy. Oh boy, the holy blade. The sword saint, if you will. Uh use the Tanto and use a normal Yash Sugar here. We're gonna jump Mortal Blade in Ganitro's face once he starts his attack, so you kinda delay it a second. That does more than half of his posture bar, and then it's really just um, unfortunately needed to use a firecracker there to stop that attack because it's a time waster and then you really just blow through him like the Yash sugar just tears through his posture bar so for the first phase of Ishin, hopefully you did Ganitra fast enough that you still have Yash this really is a practice thing I hate when I have to say this in these speedrun things but it's true like you can see that I'm blowing through him here because the Yash and my timing but I practice this so much there's really three things he's going to primarily do if you stay aggressive. There's that, there's the spin uh, sword, and there's the poke and then thrust. Pretty easy. So, Yash in front of him, then step behind, wait until the spear is coming down, and then use Mortal Blade. You can see I really got his posture up there, which is nice. Unfortunately, I have not gotten his... Uh, I have not gotten his health down, so it's going to decrease here a decent bit, but not... not Oh, actually, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Because <laughs> I ran away there to heal, which, understandable. He, he, I can never get the timing on that one, but this, yes. If you wait for the right timing, look at this. The power of mortal draw, baby. The power of mortal draw. Look at that damage. And now it's like, okay, bro, it's easy. Just give me lightning. Like, I heal. You don't need to use any sugars. Just get the lightning, hit it with it, and then get the mortal draw. That's it. Look at this. Look at this. Nice. Nice. I'm out of spirit emblems now in terms of using mortal draw, so now I just need you to give me that lightning, baby. Give me that lightning. And he does this shit, which is not lightning. I specifically asked for lightning. Would you serve me up some lightning, sir? Yeah, you got to be really careful about doing that on Ishin. You can't really just jump in and mortal draw because it does not stun him. He just poises through it, so be careful about that. But third phase is pretty easy. Yeah, if you can get the timing, you got to be careful about the timing on the wind in the second phase. 
but it's it's very long. Like there's a huge delay, but as long as you jump it, it like counter hits him in this weird way where you just get a full posture hit on him that just destroys his health bar. Very nice. I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to get him here because the rock, but fortunately he pushed out enough that I was able to get him. And overall, a, a decent Ishin fight. Like, I, I wish I hadn't died <laughs> in the second phase. That would have been nice, but um, I rallied okay, and, you know, it, it all worked out. It was fortunate that I got the timing right on the wind attack and that he, um, he gave it to me because otherwise, if he gets really spammy with the spear and the sword in that phase, it can be pretty rough. One thing you can do to kind of circumvent that is only attack one or two times and then wait for what he's going to do and deflect. It seems to bait him to use more basic attacks instead of going into his really crazy combos. But yeah, your your mileage may vary. Your beatings may vary. I practiced that boss a lot other than the second phase because I when I used to speed run, we played on old patch where you just skipped the second phase. You baited his AI into keeping the spear out. Um, so... The trade-off in this patch is you have to face phase two, but you get mortal draw for the entire run and for him, which is pretty nice. So give the tears to Kuro, say no to second playthrough, come here, use the attack power. And now we're going to go to Senpu Temple, Temple Grounds, because we are only one prayer beat away from getting a seventh necklace. This is a safety strat. This is just like, I may as well get the extra little bit of HP and posture before I fight Demon of Hatred, which is a hateful battle coming up, because um, man, that... That fight. I mean, I've practiced it and I've gotten better at it, but dude, it's still it's still pretty damn hard. <laughs> uh, jump down, make sure you grapple on that because sometimes you can fall weird. And then just jump down, do a stealth blow, and then mortal draw and he's dead. Pretty easy peasy. After that, just grapple out and then use the idol to warp to last rested or temple. Doesn't really matter. I actually don't know if that matters. I don't know if it's like slower to go to the temple i don't think so i don't see why it would be because this as you can see I, I never mentioned it but this this runs on in-game time so um probably should have mentioned that <laughs> i'm so sure that i don't kill this headless now dude i'm so sure i'm so sure because you can see i have making your headless spin after hateful battle like i move my splits around yeah i i don't think i do i don't think i do what a travesty dude I'm not doing it again, though. Definitely not. Uh, <laughs> okay, so when you get here, Tonto, then Yashiriku Spirit Fall. Uh, oh, shit. I forgot. You, you go Stealth Blow this guy first, because you want all the guards dead, because you really don't want them while he's around. Because he does different attacks and focuses on them a bit. It's just a pain in the butt. After you've killed him, use Divine Confetti and use Spirit Fall. Then... Per phase, for the first two phases, you have one single jumping mortal draws, or I should say double. And it will stun him if you use it right away. You just got to be careful about when you use it. Whenever he does this, do your best to get close to him because it means he's going to throw fireballs. If you can't, just let it slide and get away from him because you do not want to eat those because the fireballs will one-shot you with Yash on. After that... You can deflect his attacks, and I really recommend it because you can build his posture bar, as you're about to see here, up faster than you can get rid of his health. If I deflected the head there, he probably would have died. But I, I, I missed the deflect, unfortunately. And here, you see, because he got so far away, I was like, I'm not taking it. Like, I'm staying away. There's no way I would have gotten close enough for the fireballs. So it's a little unfortunate that he ran away there, but it happens. That's that's his boss. He's very trolly in that way in terms of the speed run, so... Just gotta respect it. If you don't, he'll kill you, and then you have to do it all over again without items, and ouch, that is not fun. So, wait a second here. Use Divine Confetti. Wait until you see the smoke. Use Yash Spirit Fall. I like to let him go far away, because this attack is very iffy with hitboxes. It can be very easy for that attack to hit you, so I like to bait it out right in the beginning and then get close. Deflect the legs as best I can. Unfortunately, I try to use my mortal draw there and he decides to jump back. He's just going to do that sometimes. It's trolly, but it's it's just the nature of it. And then I'm like, okay, I have one more single mortal blade, so let me use it now. And what does he decide to do when I do it? That. So, unfortunate, but we shall persevere. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's not going particularly well. But... Despite the fact I have no revive, despite the fact I only have one heal, despite the fact my health bar is at half, despite the fact my Yash is out, I'm going to deflect that head, and I'm going to keep attacking him, and just go on about it. I get my stagger, finally, get some extra hits in, and then he does this attack, which, while a bit of a time waster, 
you can always get two hits guaranteed after you come in. I believe it's two hits guaranteed, which is nice. This attack, you can actually deflect all four hits, but I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I deflected the first and the second, which gives you a little fire damage, so just be careful about that. And then, there I almost spammed R1, because I was like, you're dead, but he, he, he was very trolly in this way. He did a lot of running away at critical moments in this fight, which was pretty annoying, but what are you gonna do about it? You gotta, you gotta win. You gotta win. So ideally what you want to do here is immediately use a Yash Sugar, and I'm realizing now that I forgot to use the Yash Sugar, which is why this was harder. If you do, that first Mortal Draw will stun him, and then he won't be able to do the spin, and then you kind of just spam Mortal Draw, and it gets his posture bar up to maybe like 80%, but because I forgot to use it, I'm now realizing it was bad. Here, I was like, will I be able to get close enough? I don't know. I actually think if he had used the fireballs there, like the fireball toss, I think I would have gotten hit. So I'm really glad that he didn't um, and decided to do that, which is a time waster, but at least I don't die. <laughs> um, he chose this attack. I was like, oh God, I'm pretty close, but it's fine. Get back in, get my two guaranteed hits, and then he's stompy stomp, deflect those. He decides one last time to run away from me, and I'm like, dude, just die, just die, I got this, fireballs, yes, baby, yeah, oh, we got it. Scary fight, sloppy fight, hard fight, everything about it, just yikes, but I did it. I was super, super happy, because I was like, it's 150, like, this is gonna be close, because now I've killed every boss in the game. All that is left are a couple of, uh, cleanup mini-bosses. I was like, I'm, I, sh I should have a chance. I should have a chance to get sub two hours. Should have a chance. So, I'm gonna move on to uh, Headless now. The Headless I left behind. I left two behind, but I think we're only gonna go for one of them. We're just gonna forget the other one exists and just pretend it doesn't exist. Cause you can see there, that was the one. I skipped that Headless split right there. Cause I was like, ah, uh, I don't think this is in the right place. Like I'm pretty sure that Headless is dead. We're all just gonna pretend it's dead. We're not gonna act like it's alive. Let's all just agree to do that. Look, I tried very hard in the speedrun. I attempted it a whole nine times. It's really not a lot. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. We do go get this headless, though. We do go get this headless. This headless is, uh, just go to Underbridge Valley and then run over the same way you would go to the Fire Junkard, but here we're just gonna run past run, grapple to this branch, and then from this branch, sprint and jump to the right, grab the ledge, and I think you can actually do a jump and re-grab the ledge, but if you don't, you just fall and have to redo it all over again, so it's like, I'll take the three second time loss, thank you. Um, that's actually an extra gachi sugar right there you could get earlier in the run, but since I save them for later, you can't, but I promise you, saving these for later in the run is way better because they do so much damage to you, the terror is awful, but now that you have all the attack power from Demon of Hatred and everything and all the other bosses, you do so much damage, you'll see here. But he gave me the worst possible opener. That is the worst possible opener because that attack, it's very quick and hard to deflect if you've committed to attacking. The one nice thing there, which I don't get, is if you attack fast enough, he always teleports behind you, you'll actually just stun him, which is nice. But there I don't get it and he pulls out my ass. So, unfortunate. There, fortunately, he was a little bit nicer, and he waited and gave me, like, the delayed slam, but we're, uh, we're, we're doing okay-ish. I probably should have healed there, because you actually can't hit him right away. It would have been worth, but this turned completely into a deflect fight. Like, what is this right now? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I pulled through and I got it, so... And then, right there, I actually tried to deflect while hitting R1, and I ended up mortal blading him. I decided to wait to get up because I'm like, okay, I'm not getting my ass pulled out again. So, got it. Good. Good. Dead. All headless are dead. We can all agree that every headless is dead now. And we're gonna go on to Buckethead, okay? All head boss enemies from this point. I'm just gonna stop. Alright. If you were to kill some other headless that doesn't exist, you would teleport to the... Um, area where you kill that lone shadow, you just go down to the right, you run over to it, and you do the same thing you did to that guy. You kill him without getting hit once because you're a god at this game. I believe in you. Now, Buckethead. Uh, this used to be a much easier fight because you, well, I don't know why I'm pretending like it's hard. Anyway, war warp to the watermill. It used to be easy because you could jump on her head and get a stealth blow, but uh, that was patched. But at this point in the game, She's not tough at all, especially with uh, 
the power of mortal draw, just use Yash behind, Yash Spearfall, then as you can see, her health is basically gone already, and her posture is very high, so, Goomba, dead, well, one bar anyway, then I actually think I timed this poorly, yeah, you, you need to wait a lot longer for her to get up, her animation for getting up is slower, so I only end up hitting with one there, at this point, it's pretty much like, you don't get to R1 her very easily, so it's kind of just wait for the deflects and then kill, um, and then after that, you just warp to last commune. I think at this point, it actually makes sense to put um, over the Tonto. I think you could actually put the idol, so you could like get that faster, but it don't matter. Anywho, uh, one final round is the last Headless. Yes, the last. I forgot. We. I forgot. You're right. You're right, viewer who's furiously typing a comment. You did not kill every mini boss in this run. You're right. There is one headless left. There is one, only one, and we're gonna go kill it now by going to the Ashina Depths Hidden Forest and doing uh, getting on this branch, doing this cool little wall kick here. Like, look at this wall kick. Woo! Look, that's cool. Uh, you get that little grapple. You're gonna go down. Use divine confetti, spirit fall. And this pretty much is the same headless as the others. There's not much to say about it. It's the same crap. Just deflect as best you can. Pray that he doesn't give you a terrible attack and try not to get your ass pulled out. And also, do you see that warp? <laughs> he tried to appear behind me, but because I had my back against the wall, it just like kind of warped me around. That was pretty cool. We have fun here at the Democracy Gaming Channel. It's, it's a good time. Not a terrifying time at all. Not a forgetful time either. And so he's gone. Like I said, wait, <laughs> just don't let yourself get grabbed. I'm going to heal just to be safe. My uh, Yash ran out there, but that's fine. Your end, your end game damage is so much that it just doesn't really matter. There's, I, I almost have half a mind to say maybe it's better to just not even use it. Like, I guess it is because you do more damage, but you do so much damage anyway. <laughs> and if you had more health, you could take more hits. But then again, with Headless, I guess it doesn't matter because you, you get terrorized. But... Do that cool, sick backflip off the wall so you can grapple up there and then do a long running jump and kick off this wall. I was paranoid because I fell before and if you fall, you're kind of screwed. But jump up here and unfortunately, I think this gets screwed. You want to throw two shuriken at these monkeys. For some reason, that shuriken hits the dying monkey and doesn't kill that one. So he ends up seeing me and that's why this guy starts shooting me. But I got him. Normally, you'd want to shuriken that guy when you land, like the gun guy, and then you want to shuriken this guy, then jump for the stealth blow, but this all just got screwed, and I was like, is the other monkey even there? I can't tell. I can't see him. So it's like, for, forget it. I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going in. You just do the stealth blow, mortal draw, then firecracker, mortal draw, easy peasy. Um, and then we need to just warp to last rested. Unfortunately, the monkey is alive, and he's trolling me. He's jumping back. He's like, wee, wee, wee. I'm jumping. Thanks, monkey. Uh, the reason I kill the monkey is because I can't idle out while the monkey's there. He's just going to hit me while I'm trying to get out. So he need to die. And then, yeah, uh, now last call is over. I think I forget to split a lot of these, but, you know, we're all forgetful sometimes. Every single one of us. It happens to the best of us. And now because we are at the Hidden Forest, we can actually go to Last Rested and go straight on to the Shichiman Warrior. And this is going to be the same deal as the other Shichiman Warrior. There's nothing that special to this guy. It's using the Yash, use the Spirit Fall. We don't have a Purifying Agent for this, so I don't know that it really matters. It might just be a safety strat or something. I'm not sure. But just run up to him, square up for the first few hits, spin around him. Um, be careful. about. I think I got hit by like a head there and... Almost missed the death blow again. I had a lot of those things happen in this run. I don't know why. Um, try to figure out where he's going to teleport to. I think he's going to be to my left. Um, because I get hit by a head there, I think like it, it popped up under my butt. I think because that popped up under my butt, I wasn't able to get to him in time. So unfortunately, I still can't show you the like speedy run up thing. Maybe I'll be able to show you here. Nope, because I got a head under my butt again. Oh, I got it. Yeah, see, if you're right in front of him, he actually can't hit you because you're, like, under the staff. Pretty nice. Anyway, it's the same deal. You're just spinning to your right around him, hitting R1. I think it is eight times for this guy as well. And then just stealth blow. Try to avoid being squared up to him completely because if you are, um, then he'll, you know, deflect and then you have to do the whole thing. So here I was like, yes, dude. We've killed everything but the Shichiman Warrior for sure, definitely. And... 
all I need is this last Sheetman Warrior, but the problem is I ran out of Divine Confetti. I rest there to see if I have more, and I don't. So I'm like, crap, where do I go? Where do I go? And Chad had told me before that uh, there's one near Lady Butterfly, like that's an easily accessible one that we all knew about. So it was like, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's just go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Because the only boss left, I repeat, the only boss left is the Fountainhead Shijima Warrior. And I don't really remember where it is at this point, but I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I remember you guys said it's behind one of the like walls that you have to move. So it's like, okay, move the wall, move the wall, move the wall. But then I'm like, which one of these is the Divine Confetti again? I don't remember. I think it's this one. Oh, crap. That's a light coin purse. No, it's probably this one. Oh, crap. That's a Mibu balloon of wealth. Well, you know what wealth I don't have? Divine Confetti, and I need it right now. Oh, my God. It's fine. Nobody needs to panic because I will eventually uh, find it. <laughs> Finally found it, and then I'm like, okay, I have a minute. I have a minute to warp out to Last Rested. I have to warp to the temple. And, or sorry, not warp to the temple. Warp to Fountainhead Palace, and I have to go kill the Shichiman Warrior. Then get out of here. So I'm like, dude, yes, yes, yes. My goal was sub two hour. I need the sub two hour. I need it. I need it. I need it. Um, but I thought it was dead. I'm like, there's no way, man. There's no way. Like 45 seconds, I can't. Because when you get here, you got to run forward. I'm not exactly sure why this is done. This is one of those, like, monkey see I do. Um, you run here. I think it manipulates the enemies and the way they are interact in some way. Anyway, you do it, and then you touch the wall, use the Divine Confetti, you jump down, and you can actually get a stealth blow on this warrior, which is nice. Then run up to these poles, and when you get here, you use the Yash Spirit Fall. And then just run straight forward until appear. And like I mentioned, if you get to him in time, like you're good to just stand right under him. And then I think for him, it's like 10 or 11 hits. I think he's a little bit stronger, but easy peasy, got it. You got to wait for the item to appear up the Lapis Lazuli and then quit out as fast as you can. And then boom, 159, 59, the sub two hour dream is dead. I totally didn't kill that headless. I'm sorry. I'm so... Ugh. I'm coming back to this days later, and I'm, I was so stoked that I did this and so excited to show you guys. Um, and I, I like to title my videos with the how to do blah, blah, blah in under two hours or one hour or whatever. Um, <laughs> I feel lazy and I feel bad for it, but I really don't want to go back and do this run again. I, I have to be honest, I didn't enjoy this run that much because, like I said, I did get burnout on Sekiro a little bit, a lot of it. Um, I've, I've just, I've, I've covered these games too much. I've covered these games too much. So that, that's the bottom line. Um, I did this for fun at the end of the day. This isn't meant to be taken super seriously. I don't take these games super seriously. It's not that big of a deal. They're meant for entertainment. So are my videos. They're for fun. So if you're mad at me for not killing the one headless, then I apologize to you concerned viewer, but I am proud of this run. Nonetheless, I know I could have gone and killed that headless. I know if I kept running this, I could have gotten a lot better time. Without a doubt, there were so many errors in this run, but I don't know. At the end of the day, I kind of like uploading something like this because a run like this, it's not pristine. It's not perfect. There's a lot of errors in it, but there's not so many errors that it's unpleasant to watch, I would think. It just makes this look like something you might pick up yourself, practice for a day or two, and you might be able to get a run together that looks like this. And that's pretty cool. I think that's really cool. That's why I make these videos. I don't make these videos to brag and be like, look at me and be how impressive I am. That's how you speak. Um, I share these because I know you guys like these games and I think maybe you'd like an opportunity to go through or maybe you just like hearing me talk for a long time and if that's the case then hey I'm extremely grateful for that thank you very much um, but yeah I am still proud that I did this run in this time um, sloppy but hey you know what uh, nope there's, there are a million jokes I can make there but none came to my head and that's all well and good I should stop rambling now because I do this at the end of every single one of these speedrun tutorials. So instead, I will release you. If you do this run, I wish you the best of luck. I uh, will leave my notes down in the description. If I don't leave them down there, yell at me in the comments and I'll probably see them. If I don't, hit me up on Twitter. You should follow me on Twitter because I am on there. I said I wouldn't ramble. I promised I wouldn't. So thank you very much for watching. Much love to you and I'll see you in the next video.